No, we're live. Look at me. The cold yeah, my right. pants down. <laughs> I know. Yeah. As, oh god, as John runs in here saying, "Give me my platinum." He really wants his platinum card. Um, okay, so <laughs> impromptu. We know we have an unfamiliar setting here. I am not in the Tesla. It's not a Tesla talk. It's in a hotel room. I'm in an un- undisclosed location, and we got. <laughs> I, I figured the. I figured the man who's. Uh, who you guys will, will learn has uh, has lived in Hawaii his whole life. I'm sure everybody knows. Um, I figured let me put on a nice like kind of Hawaiian shirt, maybe a little bit, <laughs> make him feel comfortable <laughs> really while, while we're here. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yes, yes. I I didn't I wore this shirt literally for you. That's the only reason I wore this, oh, this shirt. <laughs> I appreciate that. It feels like That's right. Yes, definitely. Um, so for you guys who are coming in, appreciate you all. Woodsy, Bobby, Yakuza, Yakuzo, um, John, Woodsy. Uh, so that anybody, Richie, Matt. Everybody who's in here, Josh, and I'm sure, and, and Matt Clausen, right? What's going on, guys? Uh, <laughs> there's the end, 70, 87 days later. So, Saturday's Hawaiian shirt day, right? Right. That's right. It's all right. Josh. Actually, wait, real quick on mm-hmm. the actually, though, in Hawaii, uh, what's it called? Every, it was not every, it's not like a formal thing, but usually it's like Aloha shirt Friday. So, it's like on Fridays, like usually wear. Like, you know, like an Aloha shirt like that. Not like not like in public, but like at work or something. <laughs> if, you, if you have to, um, if you work at a job where you wear like college shirts or stuff. So Really? There, there is, yeah, it's a, like an informal, unofficial thing. I mean, so not in, everyone follows it, but. Instead of casual Fridays where you just wear like the shirts, you have like Hawaiian Fridays, right? Like, you like yeah, Aloha, yeah, Aloha shirt Friday. I mean, just. That's know, maybe great. if you're like at or something i don't know but so let me yeah. ask you something then Do, does it actually give you power when you wear shirts like this <laughs> does it actually give you power? oh <laughs> like yeah. do you feel invigorated like like if i'm italian and i go eat some pasta like maybe i feel invigorated if i'm eating the, the the food of my people if you're wearing hawaiian shirts and you're hawaiian does that give you like an, a 3x in ability or something <laughs> yeah well okay well so so here's the thing and um well i'll, I'll clear it up right now because I get I get this question asked a lot, so it's it's tough because there is a distinction between being Hawaiian and coming from Hawaii. So because so outside of Hawaii, right? Like how we we're just talking about right now. Yeah. Like I'm Hawaiian, right? Because I'm from Hawaii. You know, right. just like if you live in California, you know, they say I'm Californian, etc. Mm. But the thing is, in Hawaii, you like I wouldn't consider myself. I'm not, I'm not Hawaiian because in Hawaii, they're referring to like the actual ethnicity, Hawaiian, you know, like Asian, you know, like Japanese, Chinese, yeah. Hawaiian, Portuguese, you know? Yeah. Um, so that's why in, in Hawaii, um, it's not like I, well, I mean, no one really asked anyway, but it's not like yeah. I say, oh, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm Chase, I'm Hawaiian or something like that. <laughs> right. Um, even though, yeah, out, outside of Hawaii, like that's a normal thing to, um, like, not assume, like assume, right? It's like, oh, Chase, he's from Hawaii, Hawaiian, whatever. Mm-hmm. But anyway, yeah. going back to the to the, the strength thing, the yes. Aloha shirt, the Aloha shirt vibe is definitely like a like a chill vibe, you know, like that. Like the superpower is just being like, happy, <laughs> like chill. Like, it's super cliche, but it's like, you know, it's like it's like oh, like relax, you know, because it's because it's like oh, vacation mode type type of thing, right? Like most like tourists or whatever wear that because it's like oh, on vacation or like when you go. To like I don't know Mexico or something. It's usually like a button down or you know it's like that yeah. tropical outfit. I guess you would say, but that's the superpower. Is like it puts I love you in it. A good mood. <laughs> I love it, and it seems like you always are in a, in, in a in a good mood, and you seem like very oh, calm. I try to. I try to. <laughs> um, although I uh, have to say, Woodsy did come in hot. Richie said he's coming in hot early. Woodsy came in with a twenty dollar chat man. Know. Appreciate you, man. Was he, man? Was That's a crazy. lot of money. Dude, that's, that's a lot. Chipotle bowls, bro. <laughs> I, just I think had my first yeah. one of, of the move yesterday, and it was so good. <laughs> Very nice. Yeah, but you do have to calculate everything in, in Chipotle bowls. But Woodsy, we salute you, sir. I really appreciate you, man. Coming in, coming in hot like that right at the beginning. That's that means a lot. You know, Thank you, Woodsy. For sure. <laughs> Jeez. Um, and uh, yeah, really, I appreciate you. I'm in a that. great mood to make a lot of pop jokes. That's true. Perfect segue. Perfect segue. So, 
with intros aside, <laughs> actually though, there's a million different uh, intros I could say about Chase. Good vibes, good good moods. Uh, you know, 1.6 million uh, views on his channel without shorts until recently. Talks about yeah, all things credit topic. cards. Yes, credit cards related. Uh, talking actually about some savings accounts and maybe some hotel reviews that we might get into. Um, but the main thing, which is what I put the thumbnail as, which is your most latest. Uh, news that you kind of broke to everybody, which is how you mm. actually beat pop up jail. Um, yeah, so <laughs> you did it. You did it. So, if you could just give us a quick synopsis, synopsis of what happened with your why, yeah, like you were put in pop up jail, how'd you get out, and what card did you get? <sighs> okay, so I guess to start things off, I think it was July or en like ending of June, maybe beginning of July or something like that. I mm. applied for the Amex Blue Business Plus card, mm. so. I got approved for that, no problem. Um, and then I, by that time, I already saw that the, the Marriott Bonvoy Brilliance card had that limited time offer. Mm. So it's like 200K Marriott points. Um, it's 150,000 after you hit it, hit the, hit the sign up bonus, the minimum spend, and then like an mm -hmm. extra 50,000 if you book six nights or five nights by January yeah. 2024, something like that. Anyway, it was all time, it was, a, it was a high offer. I was like, oh, you know, I was already thinking about getting that card because I'm trying to transition to Marriott elite status mm. and um, eventually the Ritz Carlton card shout to Stan because he's oh, yeah. been talking about that and like the Marriott um, loyalty program and the free nights in some yeah. recent videos. But anyway, so I knew I, I wanted to get that card and the limited time offer on the brilliant was going to end like in the, like the first or second week of August or something like that. Yeah. So I planned it out. I was like, okay, so I just got the blue business plus. I'm not going to, I don't need to, I'm not going to apply for it. Like, uh, the Marriott, the the brilliant card right after, mm. um, but I'm gonna get it, you know, like a week before that that sign up bonus or that yeah the sign up bonus expires, mm. or goes away. So it was like the week before. Hop onto my computer. I don't know. It was like eleven, <laughs> ten o'clock or ten thirty in the in the morning, something like that. Hop yeah. on my computer, just you know, do the normal don't, normal routine I just did last month. Just hop in the Amex, log in. Find the brilliant card, boom, go through the application, hit submit, whatever, feeling good. And then, as you saw in the video, da -da 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 -da, the stupid pop up girl just came up. <laughs> and I was like, dude, I was, I, I was actually like, my stomach dropped. And I was like, there's no uh, way. Because I know Spencer talked that talked about that a few months ago. Like, a bunch of us were talking about oh, yeah. Papa you know, Jail recently. And of course, I was like, oh, I'm special. I could. You know, I, didn't, <laughs> right. I didn't get it i didn't get any problem with the blue business plus i'm feeling good about myself mm. and then whatever I, I i got hit so then i was like oh great now i gotta go through like the troubleshooting process trying all this other stuff so the first thing i did which was the easiest was i went to my i think it was yeah i went to my phone i switched so i switched devices i went incognito mode on my phone i went to cellular data instead of wi-fi Right, and I went straight back to the Amex website. I didn't log in this time. I was feeling good about myself. Like, okay, whatever. We outsmart I'm Amex. Boom, boom, boom. Apply. Still thing. Same thing. Pop up. I was like, all right, whatever. First try didn't work out. Still mm. got time. Then I moved on to back to my computer. I went into incognito mode on a different browser. I used mm. cellular hotspots so or connected to my phone instead of the yeah. Wi-Fi, and then I went through a someone's referral link as opposed to going directly to the to the Brilliant Card itself. So I went through a mm. referral link. Same thing, apply, 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 and then bro, and then the pop up came up again. And, and, and this time I was I was like actually getting pissed. I was like, oh my god, dude, I shouldn't have waited, you know, this late to try and get this offer. Like I didn't expect getting in pop-up jail like i'm screwed if i don't mm -hmm. you know because i didn't want to get this the brilliant card without that high time high time or all no, i don't even know if it's all time hot but hmm. the high offer right um so i was like oh my god now i gotta do all this other crap um but eventually so the fourth try i went back to my laptop i went back to of course incognito mode that's like the fundamentals incognito mode yeah um don't sign in or actually, no, this one I didn't even need to sign in because I went through Marriott's website. So I mm. Googled, you know, Amex, Marriott, Bond, Boy, Brilliant Card, whatever. First site's always Amex. But then like the second or third site was, you know, the Marriott website. 
So I yeah. clicked on the Marriott website. Uh, I saw the brilliant card, hit apply now, and it shot me to the Amex website again. I was like, okay, here we go again. Um, hmm. and then I applied everything, or I you know, entered everything, applied, and then that's when I finally got approved. Because I went through the co-branded, you know, their door, as opposed to Amex's front door. You know, I had to go in the back door. Um, and thankfully that worked. I mean, unfortunately, though, I, there were some people who, like, commented on that video saying they tried the same thing. Hmm. And it didn't work. Yeah. So that's why, like, I mean, like, you've talked about, everyone's been talking about, like, how it's there's never really just one, you know, yeah. golden method that's going to work. You kind of got to try all of them until, until something works. So thankfully for me, that was on the same day, like literally two hours after I got the first pop-up gel or one hour, something like that, I got approved. And I was, I was so stoked, uh, super blessed. But the reason why I think I got the pop-up in the first place, I think was because of the Amex Blue Business Plus card, I uh -huh. think. And it has like an introductory or the, yeah, the BBP had like an introductory 0% APR for like the first mm. 12 months. I mean, it's not like I had enough time to use it yet because I literally had it for a month. So yeah, I don't know if that's the reason why. If it was too soon of a you know applying for an Amex card, but I mm. waited like like six weeks about. So that's you know I've I've applied for like cards that close together and from the same yeah. bank before and got approved. So I don't know, but I, I think it was a Blue Business Plus. I've been spent you know putting money or charging stuff on my like other Amex cards, so it's not like. All my Amex cards have zero balances, and I just applied right. for right. another one. I didn't close any Amex accounts. I didn't. I'm not like <laughs> opening a bunch. So I mean, it was, it's a real head scratcher. <laughs> why? But I, I would, I was, I would assume it was the the Blue Business Plus. But who knows? Amex is mysterious. <laughs> Definitely so. could be. And when you brought that up in your video, like it didn't actually occur to me that that was something that one would do to, to get around pop-up jail um to, to kind of it, it, it seems so uh almost obvious in hindsight and you're like oh i could have just went through the co-branded site and yeah. you know tried that as well um you know go through the marriott uh you know the, the actual website for, for for marriott and apply for that card and then lo and behold <laughs> that ended up working out and then you actually confirmed with the chase i mean the uh the american oh, yeah. Express rep that you know what you were going to get that sign up bonus and you uh they assured you are um, so that's great. And, you know, upon your video, so we actually shared your video in the Discord, um, and a lot of the people said, like, this is cool, this worked, uh, this can work, um, work for you, obviously, um, but why isn't it working for Hilton? Um, I have some people that want maybe oh, Hilton seriously? Aspire, and they tried it. They actually, right after your video, they said, let me try, and they tried on the, uh, the Hilton Aspire, or if they wanted the Schwab card, they went on the on Schwab's website to apply, oh, and no no dice, no oh, dice. Oh, bro. Um, so that's interesting. Yeah, there is. I wonder why. So weird with that. So, I yeah, I don't know why either. Because that was yeah. so dumb. <laughs> I mean, I honestly, right? I didn't, I didn't think about that idea myself. I had like by that third try that I failed. I was like, yeah. oh crap! Not you know. I let me see what else other people have been you know saying on the mm. internet, and then so I found that one. I was like, oh, I didn't think about that. And I remember Colby talking yeah. about. Like oh, calling in to try and apply before, and I was mm. like, "Fuck!" I, I'm sorry. I was like, "I don't know if I want to call in." <laughs> uh, yeah, I was feeling kind of lazy. I was like, "Oh, I don't think I'm ready for that yet." <laughs> so I'm not ready? Because I, I, yeah, I didn't want to get, get denied by a person. I, it's fine if I get denied by a robot. <laughs> it's a different story when when someone else is involved. But yeah, so I found it on the, online somewhere. Um, like, oh, try going through a cold branded the cold branded. So I, instead, I was like, all right, whatever, nothing to lose. And then, yeah, that's eventually what happened or what worked for me, thankfully. Gotcha. Gotcha. Well, I'm, I'm glad it did work out. And like you said, you did try every other method to kind of get out. Like, you're, you know, you, you weren't negligent to your cards. They were all being used. They didn't have zero balances. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you, you didn't cancel any cards. Like, I canceled cards recently and I was put in pop-up jail. Could be a reason. Oh, yeah. Um, and some of them do have no balances, haven't used them in a little bit, so they also could be reasons. So you had otherwise, other than just getting approved for the uh, Blue Business Plus, I guess recently, or, or you know applying for it. Yeah, yeah. Um, a lot of people kind of theorize like, hey, 
you know, put more spend on the card, do this, do that. And it seems like everything is, uh, th- there's too many data points to actually draw a, con- a con- <laughs> So it, it seems as, well, as if like, it, it, maybe you can do a one-off thing like you did where you can go with the Cobra Insight or, I don't know, a waiting game till Amex just alleviates things. <laughs> yeah. Like, seems I, so. I, I know there's this one comment that's, on that video too they're saying like oh, i've been amex pop joe for like like month like i think it was over nine months or a year even like a long time i was like oh damn well i guess waiting doesn't work for you <laughs> you're like that's so dumb i don't know it, it has to be something else for like that guy um but i yeah i just like i said in that video too like it, this goes for everything it's just like i hate the feeling of just waiting for something like relying on something else that's not in your control for like this kind of thing example for example to just let just let it come Hmm. to you like i don't like i want to try something and not just be the solution oh just wait wait and then hopefully when you try it'll work again (laughs) it's just probably like that that type of person i am for this specific situation but i was like i don't want to wait i want (laughs) i want to try something so that's why I had to do all the other methods uh, first before I guess waiting was the last last resort. I don't blame you, Ben. I absolutely do not blame you. Um, and uh, I think I'm glad. So, what uh, what card did you? Uh, so you mentioned a little, yeah. but what, what, why'd you get this card? And, and <laughs> oh yeah, here. So let me show it. Actually, the Marriott's Bonvoy Brilliant. Which is all it's, I didn't. Yeah, it's such a nice card. Uh, okay, so why I got I'm it? I'm sorry, you're can, for some reason you're uh, freezing up a little bit on my side. I think you're good for everybody else, but for some reason, freeze it on mine. What about that? I uh, wonder why. <laughs> no, seriously. If, I don't know if this Like just the video or, or the audio, too? But, uh, it's a little robotic. Uh oh. What was the chat saying? Just a little bit. Hey chat, are we, are we Um I think you're good. It might just be me. So I've had it before where someone was completely frozen for me the entire hour and a half and everybody what? was it was fine for everybody else. Really? That's so weird. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> talking talking to a I, I think that's where we're going through. Okay. Yeah, well, let me yeah exactly. It so it's like it's hard for me to react. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, said it looks good. yeah, they say it looks good. So you're you're frozen okay, for me there, but I'll I'll try to get my reaction. Really? Oh my god! So you're gonna have to like pretend. It's like when you're it's like in, being an actor and you're acting in a green screen. You know, it's yep. kind of hard. You know, there's no dragon, real life dragon. Okay. Well, anyway, That's right. so yeah, I got the Marriott Bonvoy Brilliant <laughs> card uh, because one of my friends back home was like a crazy credit card guru. Was like, dude, you should try get titanium status for Marriott because they treat me so well for all these years. You know, of course, hmm. every, every, it's a case case by case, right? It's not like there's people who are like, oh, I, I don't like titanium status, diamond status better, or like going with another hotel. Anyway, this guy was like, oh, we should try titanium. So this is why, like for the Elite Night credits and they have the Mar- Marriott Bonvoy business card. So that way I could combine the credit, the Elite Night credits. I think I have like, so between those two, I have like 40 nights and I need 70 <laughs> I believe 70 or 75. I think it's 70 um, hmm. to hit titanium. So I need to stay 30 nights on my own, which I'm not <laughs> going to go for this year. <laughs> I'm going to try yeah. for it next year. Um, but I wanted the card and the sign up bonus kind of was enticing. So I want, so that's why I, I chose to get it, got it now. And then eventually, hmm. Oh yeah. So, I mean, that was, that was the main reason actually was just, it was so dumb, but to try platinum status with Marriott first of all, and then yeah, uh, eventually try titanium because also with titanium you get United, like United Airlines silver status automatically, and I fly United oh. unintentionally a lot, so I was like, oh, I may as well, may as well try to do that too. Um, Marriott is there's like a more of a footprint uh, on places where I want to go as opposed to Hilton hmm. and Hyatt. So yeah. I was like, ah, why not? So that's why I got that. And then the Ritz Carlton card, which um, I was already thinking about before. Stan hmm. talked about his like his, his first Marriott video, not first, but like he 
they had a recent one where we talked about like how you get I think like was it ah, I forget the type like four nights free every year or something like that where you show he, he did a good job showing like yeah. what cards you need to get you know how many free nights a year. Then that video kicked off like oh maybe I should start getting the Ritz Carlton card. Then after that video, I actually I wrote a script and filmed um, a video on the Ritz Carlton card because like I'm inspired you know. Hmm. Um, let me look into this card for myself now if it makes sense. May as well make a video about it too. So I did that a few weeks ago. Then yeah. Stan released his video, and then I had mine scheduled for like I forget when. I think next week or tomorrow. No, two days from now, something like that. So anyway, that's the next step is to try and get the yeah. get get myself positioned for the Ritz Carlton card. So I'm I'm staying with the team uh team Marriott for a little bit. I think. Mm-hmm. Or at least Got going it. down that route. That's that's pretty cool. Yeah, listen, in, in that video he made really, I think, changed a lot of people's minds. Um, you know, th- getting those, the, the, it definitely changed my kind of roadmap going forward. Like these these four different cards, and then, you know, obviously we're talking the Ritz and, and whatnot, and getting all these free nights with Marriott. I think it's kind of like, it's funny how we all have a shift. Like, I think a few years ago, maybe it was Hilton. Now everyone loves talking about Hyatt. And now uh, it seems like I bet Marriott's Marriott. the next push with all their awesome sign bonuses and, and whatnot. And I'm sure you're getting a lot. Hmm? So, oh, yeah. Perhaps, yeah, Marriott's the move now, I guess. That's what all the cool kids are doing. <laughs> Just joking. Also, Michael, yeah. I, 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 I do, as of right now, I'm planning on keeping the card, the Marriott card, after a year, as of right now. Might change, though, within the next year. It freeze up again. <laughs> what you do? Uh, well, no, I was just answering Michael. He said, "Oh, did I mention if I'm going to keep the Marriott card after year one?" And then I'm assuming he's talking about the um, the stare. The, I'm assuming he's talking about the brilliant card. And yes, I plan on keeping that card uh for a year or after year one. Actually, yeah, you're you're now you're frozen. Your face is frozen. I'm talking to a picture. I have to. I have to act now. I have to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Don Kim. He's just thinking. You're thinking for too long, Anthony. Connection's awful. Oh, there. Okay. Now it's better. Now you're back. What the? What's <laughs> going on here? I hate this, yeah, man. Clip Not it, my normal clip setup. It. No. <laughs> Oh, maybe clip it. Um, okay, so everything's perfect. looking fine for me now. Okay, yeah, here. now you're good. <laughs> Jesus. Oh God. Yeah, Chase start starts start juggling. <laughs> Jesus. I yeah. I, oh, I hate that I'm not in my normal setup. And, you know, I hate that. Okay. Um, <laughs> but I uh, appreciate everybody. You know, carrying on. Um, nice shirt, by the way, Anthony. Thanks, Fireboy. Yes. Yeah, so trash. <laughs> It's trash out here in the middle of the ocean. It's it's just it's just straight trash over here. Um, let me get to uh, some people. Chombe, appreciate you saying that, man. Uh, nice words, Chombe. Um, okay, gotcha, gotcha. Cool. So, all right, <laughs> trying to get this back actually, on wait, track. Hold on, I, actually, wait, hold on. I, I don't know. Do you know how to juggle? I actually have these, like. <laughs> I have my hidden my hidden skill is I can juggle. You know can that? you actually? Does Keith? Yeah. Know? <laughs> hey. Wait, I hold on. Oh wow! Wow, very All nice, day. very nice. All day. Look at this guy. That is pretty All impressive. Yes. Yeah. See, look, I could do something too. I could I could do one of these. You never seen something like this before. You know, you got the hands here, right? Right. Come back and now you're we're locked. Oh <laughs> it's so stupid. It's the stupidest thing ever. Oh, I didn't know your magic mic over here. Oh my god! Magic. <laughs> different I'm breaking ankles, man. All right, <laughs> yes, that's right. Um, so, <laughs> man, I'm, I'm over here sunburned. We got some shells that that she picked up at the beach. I'm just, I'm just trying. Oh, wow. I'm just trying to make ends meet. Um, I got some nice shells. <laughs> Look at that. I got some shells if you want to buy them. <laughs> if you want to buy them. Oh my god. I got this one that looks like a like a like a guitar pig or like a, a whale's tooth. tail oh, or tooth. Yeah, yeah. yeah shark tooth. Mm-hmm. 
And I think this was is a sponge. <laughs> Ridiculous. So so on the topic of hotels, I wanted to talk about uh, a particular video you made. In fact, it is my favorite my favorite video that you've ever made. Um, you know, obviously you make a lot of great videos, a lot of great credit card content. Yeah. Obviously, subscribe to Chase if you're not already. He's got awesome stuff. But a lot of people have awesome stuff. But Chase has done a unique video, which was he yeah. did you title it Survived? I think you titled it Survived the yeah, Worst so, Rated yeah. Hotel in Hawaii. I yeah, I changed it up. I yeah, I think that might have been that might be the, the title now. I know I switched mm. it a few times. Gotcha. So what tell me that, man. So you you basically you so so you up until you know, kind of recently, you you lived in mm -hmm. Hawaii your whole life. That's where you're you're, you're born and raised. Um, mm -hmm. And you you made a video where you literally went to the worst rated hotel uh, yeah. in Hawaii. So how how was that, man? What what kind okay. of sparked that? So okay, so <laughs> I think that was the, so I had the idea. Well, it's not like an original idea because people have done it before, but I wanted yeah. to do like. Like hotel reviews, first class reviews, experience reviews. Like there's, uh, like solo solo travel is one channel nonstop. Dan, there's like Trek Trendy or something like that. There's other channels that do like you know, train, hotel, airplane, um, yeah. bus reviews, whatever. I'm yeah. Like, oh, I want to try. I want to try to do one too. Um, so that was like the first. I'm gonna I'm gonna continue to start getting into that kind of stuff. But that was a start. And hmm. the reason why I chose worst rated was, I mean, I might have to do the, uh, yeah. Well, the reason why I did worst rated is because I was, the other option is like, oh, best or nicest. And bro, I don't got money for, yeah. <laughs> like right. in, in Hawaii, like, I mean, like, yeah. I don't know, thousand dollars on the room or 2000 or, you know, even $700. I'm like, oh my God. You know, especially, yeah, especially because there was the first video. So especially because I don't know how to film that type of video because i'm used yeah. to like putting that thing on a tripod and literally talking <laughs> to myself yeah and i'm out here talking in public which i'm so uncomfortable with um like literally i don't okay well i don't know if you would remember but the opening shot is like me on the street outside of the hotel yeah you know and i'm like and i say something i forget mm -hmm. that took me so long to film because First of all, it's a, it a busy street, so people are walking up and down, and I'm not talking in public in front of other people. Bro. <laughs> right. So I'm waiting until they walk past. I'm like, and then I start, and then oh, I I, I fumbled my line or whatever. I'm like, okay, great, retake. Oh wait, someone's coming. Pause. I just like, I, yeah. I, I make it obvious that I'm like not trying to vlog or whatever. So I just like, yeah, like sitting like <laughs> yeah, this, and like go around. back. Yeah. So anyway, so that's why. I, so I did the worst rate hotel because I was like, ah, you know. It's an experimental video, so I don't want to spend too much on it because this, this yeah. is like a learning experience. So I looked that. So I looked up like TripAdvisor and Yelp. I think it was like two or three different, like one of the, like hotel websites mm -hmm. or whatever uh, agencies where I just filtered it by uh, top rated and went mm. straight to the last page where <laughs> no one goes. <laughs> right. literally like so much dust yeah. collecting on page like nine <laughs> right like no one goes over there never looked at but yeah i went there right that's where i saw like on i think it was TripAdvisor. this hotel was you know the lowest ranked and then on the other sites they were like it was towards the bottom still maybe it wasn't hmm. the worst worst but it was you know towards like the bottom five or something yeah so like yeah. okay this this hotel would probably be a good candidate so then i booked it um which honestly it was not cheap it came out to like 200 dollars, i think something like that oh my god or 100 <laughs> like 150 to 200 dollars, i think Jeez. if i remember correctly with the fee you know like there's like fees at check-in yeah uh stuff like that and i was like bro i thought this was gonna be like a bad hotel why is it so why is it like a yeah you know middle middle class hotel price <laughs> anyway i was like oh whatever so i paid it and it was a very uh, that was a very fun video to shoot because I think that's the first and one of the, one of the only ones on my channel where it was just like just I guess you could call like a reaction video because I didn't know what I was what I was expecting and it was like a, like we're you know we're experiencing it together at the same time because yeah I think maybe I had to reshoot certain shots or scenes or whatever because I screwed up something but for the most part it's like literally the, my first reaction boom that's that 
Yeah. So we got to see that. And that was fun to do, not just, again, talking to a tripod. I'm out walking around, doing different shots, which actually I'm going to try and, since I'm in here now in, in like a better room, I'm going to experiment more with like shooting, not just in one uh, scene, which was my idea when I moved, because in my old room, I could basically only film it like in one or two positions hmm. and have the blue walls everywhere. <laughs> which weren't so nice. So now I have more freedom. I have the whole house to shoot with. I have, so I was like, when I moved to LA, when I start filming the videos there or here, I would switch that up. Anyway, going back to the hotel video, it was yeah. fun to make, fun to shoot, trying to do more of them like that. Hopefully we'll up the budget and stay at nicer places. I also didn't want to use points quite yet. Cause <laughs> again, I wanted to um, make sure I got the, like the filming and editing part done first, yeah. like, or, or like yeah. get practice first. Mm. And then, so now I, I have like a taste of what kind of things to shoot or cover. Um, so now hopefully when I do it soon, um, it will just get better. We'll have more of those videos. <laughs> I thought it was great. I, I thought it was a great uh, video, especially like, like you said, it was your first one. And uh, I thought it was like really high level for for what you actually put into it to to which uh, you know other people that I've seen uh, do videos of that nature, myself included. Um, you uh, <laughs> you I think you did it really well. Like you you yeah that opening scene maybe it did take a million tries. I I get that, but it yeah. did feel good. It felt authentic. And I remember you carrying the camera around. I think in certain ways and, and opening it and going into the hotel room. Like it felt like an experience with you. Yeah. Um, and then even just the to have the foresight uh, or the the forethought to, to bring a, a device with you, which is uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> checking the no, walls. Uh, what was it? Um, what no, what kind UV, of light? UV, yeah. the, the, the UV light. <laughs> <laughs> to see if there's any, you know, some things on the wall, you know, yeah. some fluids, some fluids, basically. You know, leave it at that. But <laughs> yeah, I, um, I, I, I just thought that was so funny when you whipped that out. And you had multiple tests, things that you, yeah, you know, like, to, to add to it, you know. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I had the water, like the tap water test, I think. Yeah. There was one, um, yeah, that, the black light test. I forgot the other one. I brought a, I brought light, a yeah. sleeping bag because I ended up taking a sleeping <laughs> that's bag. Right, I didn't that's right, that's right. On, on top of the, the bed. I didn't trust it, but yeah. I mean, I didn't find any bed bugs or, or like fluids on, on the bed too much or hair. I think I found a few hairs, but I was like, I'm not chancing it. I'm sleeping on the sleeping bag. Right. No matter what. Yeah. Right. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, that, I think it was it was great though. That, I thought that was great. I think it was well done. I would love to see more because um, I I know how it is when I I filmed one uh, like the most haunted hotel uh, in in Charleston mm -hmm. and uh, Trying to watch. And, yes, no, it, and it was it was just fun. But that opening scene, I was getting pissed. Like I had she was filming me, like my fiance, and I was like, man, like for like I, I would get yeah. on the ten the tenth take. And I'm like, that one was pretty good. Like, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling in the motions. Some guy just pulls up and then parks literally right behind where I'm standing. And he's just, oh, and he's just there. I'm like, ha you have all this road that you can go and park. And you decide, and it's empty. Oh, it's like bro. midnight. And you decide to go right here. Like, a lot of that stuff happens. And you get upset. And you're like, come on. I'm just trying to. Plus, the words don't flow. We're not used to saying, like, this is the most haunted hotel. Like, we're not Mr. Beast. You know, we're just yeah. like, this credit card's pretty cool. You know, that's what we're used to. <laughs> so it's it's <laughs> tough. It's it's definitely a, a tough video. But I'm hoping to make some, some cool ones, you know, in the future. I just found, like, maybe do it while you're on a vacation anyway. So you're using the points. And maybe it's a nice place. And then you can just kind of oh, yeah, do, exactly. do both. Um, exactly. And, and uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't welcome CJ, yeah, who was course, first. I was say, what's yeah. up, CJ? <laughs> CJ's kid came so, in. Team mm -hmm. Gold. Uh oh, oh man, we can't, we can't get into that so soon. That's we gotta, <laughs> so that's gotta up, warm up. That's, <laughs> we gotta warm us up. This is gonna be all hell that breaks loose if that if we let that happen. <laughs> um, Oh, what's going on, Anthony Jones? Appreciate you being here, man. Um, people wonder what took CJ so long. Um, so I, so I wanted to ask. So, CJ. Um, so kind of uh, on because you kind of mentioned it a little bit uh, ago, a few minutes ago. CJ, whatever. Oh, Jesus! <laughs> I'm saying, careful of your He's gonna bribe you like he did the stand. Is that a threat? Are you threatening me? <laughs> it, it's a reality check. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a threat. It's a reality check. <laughs> He's speaking the truth. Right. Oh, wow. MR is tuning in from Africa. 
What? Bro, that's crazy. Whoa. I know he's traveling out there. Jeez. No. (laughs) Just a reality check, CJ. Um, but I wanted to know a little bit, uh, cause you, you're someone who's always lived in, in Hawaii and, you know, maybe you don't want to go super into it, but I thought it was fairly interesting, but now you finally, for the first time moved to the mainland. Right. And to the, I have now, yeah. Yeah. Sunny West Coaster now. <laughs> join, yeah. Join the mainland. Like how most of you are from or at right now. Uh, yeah, it was a big move. Like we talked before off live it Hmm. was like the first time moving away from like my family because i went to high school in hawaii i went to college in hawaii and i ended up staying at my you know the same house with the same parents house because the dorms aren't nearly as good as um as my room my house and the most dorms on the mainland too i would say i didn't want to dorm deal with like all of that um the most I've been away from home since now is like a month in Chicago. I went on vacation and, and then I spent like a little over a month studying abroad in Copenhagen, Denmark, which was so fun. Yeah. Um, I other than that, yeah, I've never really moved out. So that blue room that you guys, you know, you watch my videos, <laughs> is literally my, my childhood room, which is why it's blue. It wasn't a choice that I made as an adult. <laughs> Right, it's your favorite color. My room blue. <laughs> as a kid, my mom and I painted my room. That's a core memory. And now, wow. course, since I'm filming inside, it's like, oh god, hmm. why can't I just left it white? <laughs> well, um, yeah. yeah. So now, anyway, now we have white walls. We have very nice have white walls. Um, <laughs> but anyway, I'm excited to, to live on the mainland, living with some of my best friends from high school. I'm gonna try and. Um, you know, take advantage of opportunities here that I couldn't get in Hawaii. Mm-hmm. And it just go for the experience because, yeah, I think that, I think that's what's super important in, in life in general is just like, okay, cool. You have material objects and all these <laughs> tangible things. And like, I'm a fan of those too, but I like spending money on experiences, you know, traveling to some place, you mm-hmm. know, living someplace new so we'll see if i survive the year i don't know it's, it's only been like five days and i'm talking so confidently but yeah we'll see we'll see how i feel i'm gonna get homesick i know within i don't know how long i have already kind of missed home a little bit mm. but uh i'm sure i'm gonna get homesick in a little bit well oh you, you're gonna have to make a video i survived one year away from <laughs> from home I know. like like <laughs> such a big boy yeah <laughs> Everyone should be so proud of me. You guys couldn't do what I do, okay? Right, yeah. Well, look, you you made a, a farther move than most people, I think, you know, over the oh, ocean. You know? Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, that's right. How that's many right. of you traveled 2,500 miles over yeah. an ocean to live somewhere else? That's right. No one. In fact, in fact it might okay. be impossible in America. <laughs> I don't know, from Maine to California? I wonder if that's more than, might be more than 25, but I'm not sure who's doing that. <laughs> Um, that's, uh, that's, that's very funny. No, I think you, 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 you know, you, like you said, it's, it's an experience and you, you kind of just, even if it does get tough or it, it, whether that be, uh, you know, physically like, Oh, you know, maybe you have to make some extra money or you are mentally a little bit drained cause you're not, you know, away from family or away from your, you know, where you grew up and everything. Either way, it just makes you an all around better person at the end of it more well rounded mm-hmm. yeah and speaking of different perspectives and stuff like how was that uh so i didn't know that about you that you you did college kind of abroad in, in copenhagen that Dude. that must be most people when they hear that they would think it's uh party central um dinner parties in, in copenhagen yeah. right that's what that's what i've heard um so how was that like yeah um well before i get to that let me sorry i'm gonna respond to yeah. uh, and bar real quick um I didn't get shot in Chicago, and I went there. I lived <laughs> in Chicago. I lived in Chicago in August, so I, you know, screw the the wind, the snow. I was there in August, and it was so beautiful. Went to was it Lake Michigan? They say it was so nice. Um, yeah, but I, I survived. <laughs> yes, yeah, CJ. I'm in LA, and I would love to come to Florida. That is on the list. Um, 
I almost went to Fort Lauderdale this this summer, but I didn't. <laughs> so hmm. I have to go to Florida eventually. Uh, okay. But anyway, so going back to the question, uh, which was I forgot. Sorry, could you? <laughs> Oh, Let's just how was uh, how was Copenhagen, man? Oh, Copenhagen, Copenhagen was all that. Right. Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Copenhagen was awesome. So, okay, so oh, here's. Uh, so we went. The fun part too is we were in Copenhagen when the World Cup was going on, and Denmark was in the World Cup. Uh, oh. not, it wasn't like the finals or like the semi. It was like it was it was kind of up there. Um, it wasn't just like prelims or something. Um, but anyway, I went to Copenhagen Business School. I think it was called, yeah CBS. Wow. And it was so beautiful. Copenhagen is, is super flat. So, you know, that's why there's like a lot of biking that goes on. And let me tell you, the bikers there are aggressive. Like oh. my it didn't happen to me, but like one of my friends was I mean, they were they were in the wrong. They were like standing semi in the in like the bike lane kind of thing. Mm. And when one of the bikers came up, just like pushed her to the side as they're riding by, you know. I mean, I'm sure you probably get that in like New York, probably LA here anyway, but Hmm. I thought that was funny, <laughs> but uh, the people there were super nice. The um, the that was a fun experience because I dormed close to school. It wasn't on campus; it was like off campus dorms hmm. with a bunch of people from all over the world, like Croatia. You had some Americans, um, had some people from London, and yeah, so hmm. like New York. Uh, there was like Vancouver. Uh, you know, wow. there was there was four of us from Hawaii. Um like so many other parts of europe so it was so fun to like to be in i guess a setting with so many different people you know so many different diverse people and that's what i'm talking about spend your money on experiences like this you know because it was so fun like hearing about their stories you know how they grow up and then um you know saying their perspective on life and all of that because and same, same with them because they're like Hawaii. Like some of them didn't even mm. know where Hawaii was. They just heard about it. They're like, I couldn't point that out on the map. Wow. And then of course I'm like, oh, it's right here. Yeah. Right. Um, but <laughs> it was fun. Uh, partied. I mean, yeah, that was, <laughs> that was fun. <laughs> oh uh, man, he partied. I didn't, he partied. <laughs> I didn't, no, I didn't go. I didn't. I didn't go crazy at all. But it was okay. fun to be around. Uh, what's it called? Like not like-minded individuals, but you know, the si- similar age individuals, just like. Right. any college campus and you just have a fun time right. um, <laughs> but oh there's this one there's a place in Copenhagen called I don't remember <laughs> but it's like it's um, I, I would have to look it up but it's like a lawless a lawless um, zone I guess so you'd go inside um, hmm. and so police aren't allowed to enter there you know Unless, unless there's like a murder or something like crazy, wow. um, but once you're inside this zone, which I, oh, dude, I need to look it up. Oh, I for, I forget. But once you're inside this zone, there's like there's like restaurants inside. There's like there's a skate shop. There's like um, like a nice little lake thing. But anyway, once you're inside, drugs everywhere. Like they're you know they're just like selling selling drugs. I don't know, oh like, my god! Like food like food stands. But wow. it, was like, it was so nice. Everyone there was so nice and. You know, they're like, of course, there's a lot of bikes there, leaving their bikes unlocked. Wow. Um, over there. And it's like a lawless zone, but it was so chill. And it was just, I mean, it's not like I was doing anything crazy to take advantage of that, but it was cool right. to be in, I guess, a place like that. And also in huh. Denmark or Copenhagen, this is the first time I've ever seen it, but they literally leave their babies and strollers out on the outside of like the the coffee shop or whatever while they go in and eat like they they, know the the trust there is insane like i when i saw that firsthand i was like you know should i go like (laughs) go inside is this your kid it's just like your your infant in a stroller by themselves sleeping in you know outside but that's a normal thing over there you know um that's like tying up your horse (laughs) yeah it is it is no one's no one's gonna touch it no, I'm gonna touch the baby. I I don't know. Copenhagen was was fun. That was another like culture shock place. Which there is one story though, where we were in a McDonald's. So so I remember I talked about they were in the World Cup. Um, we went out to to a bar to watch. I think it was. I want to say it was Denmark versus Croatia. Hmm. And it's funny because my Croatia friend was watching it with us, and of course I'm training for Denmark because we're in Denmark. Right. Um, but 
Cro Croatia won and eliminated Denmark while we're in this pub. And then, you know, people were pissed, but it's not like, um, like here in the States where, you know, they call the full on like, hmm. riot or they go storm the streets. But anyway, that yeah. was the mood. Okay. So that was the mood. After that bar, we went to a McDonald's close by and my friends and I take up like this really long table and we're just eating, having a good time. And okay, we were being kind of foolish, but I was like throwing French fries into my friend's mouth from across the table. <laughs> right. As um, one does. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, but it's not like we were being super loud because it was already loud in there because you know, it was like, I don't know what time, but it's not like we were causing a disturbance yeah. or leaving trash on the ground. If the fry drops, I pick that up, put it, put it on the ground, or sorry, put it on the, in the table, throw my friend another one. But anyway, this one guy comes up. He's like sitting in the, on the side. He finishes his meal. Mind you, he leaves his tray and rubbish on his table. He comes up to us and he, he like starts scolding me like, you know, you guys are like, I don't know what you're, he said, oh, you're like, you're American or something. Like, this is not how you, something like, he was talking about littering, right? Because the fries on the ground and stuff. Yeah. Um, he's going at us. And he literally grabbed my neck like this. And then I was like, whoa. And then, like, all my friends stood up. They're like, whoa, 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 whoa. I was like, bro, I was, honestly, I was shocked. Like, I, oh my God. I was like, are you serious? Like, I was like, what do I, like, I don't, <laughs> yeah. I was like, what do I do? <laughs> so I'm just like, I mean, it's like, like squeeze hard. Like, I was like, ah. Well, yeah. like, just that. And I was like, I was shocked. And then, they're like, what are you doing? What are you doing? And then he just said something, I think in Danish, I don't remember. And then he left. And I was like, bro, you just left all your rubbish there. And you're talking about us yeah. measuring and everything. But anyway, that was like a wild story. I guess, wow. Uh, from Copenhagen. Maybe we deserved it. I'm not, yeah, but um, but people there are nice and the culture is great. <laughs> it was an overall amazing experience. So, Grab me by the night. But they were, they were good. They yeah. were nice there. Yeah, yeah, that was a one off thing. So. Gotcha. Yeah, you don't want the whole country coming after you. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, definitely. You I love all you. Yeah. Everyone from Denmark, I love you. We love you guys out there. <laughs> That's crazy. That's a crazy story. Yeah. To, to be yeah. in, you know, and how long were you there by, when that happens? Where, like, in the McDonald's? Well, the, in, uh, in in Denmark. Uh, as so, a whole. like, how long was, was yeah. I was in there? It was just... It was either just under or over one month because I forget because we went Jeez. to London before and then we went to like Rome and Paris after that. So, um, what's up, Cal? Cal's uh, in the so, butt in here. Um, Let's go. Yeah. So that was an interesting experience. <laughs> that guy is Denmarked for death from the credit community. <laughs> <laughs> Denmarked for death. Let's go, MR. <laughs> God, I hope not. We can't let this guy walk around freely. This this frame and neck guy. <laughs> yeah. Let's meet up with this guy. <laughs> um, and John said that's a big thing in Iceland too. He said it's going to be weird when he goes there in a few weeks. So I guess leaving the babies out. Um, oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've never heard that. That's that is pretty wild. Right. Um, that, that they, was also the first time. Hmm. Sorry, where they. Where I experienced, they leave like the eggs and stuff outside of the refrigerator, um, huh. like in, in the grocery store, you know, because I guess because we process our stuff somehow, like in a certain way, and I guess they do something different. And I was like, aren't these supposed to be chilled <laughs> and like buying <laughs> room temperature eggs or something? I was like, ah. You know, but that it, is it a good okay. point. I never thought about that be because when it comes out of the animal. I mean, it's not like it's immediately drops in a freezer, right, or refrigerator. It's it's out in the land. Like, what happens to it out in the land? So, yeah, that's well, odd. Why do we, why do we chill our eggs? That doesn't make sense. Yeah, <laughs> that's a little yeah, odd. No, <laughs> oh just, god, just like how in um, like in America, where it's, it's like unheard of. You should not really be eating raw eggs all the time. Yeah, I mean, maybe an oyster shooter is okay, cool. But then, like in Japan, they they do that a lot. Really? Or it's like very lightly cooked. Like you have a hot bowl of rice, and you just crack a raw egg over it, and then you just like mix it together, and huh. then just boom, eat that. That's, so see, that's what I'm talking about. It's, it's always going back to experiences. Go outside. Yes. Like, your hometown, your your home country. Like it's so fun to experience how other people live. And that's, that's kind of what I've learned. Like, I don't know, as I'm getting a little bit older now, uh, you know, I've always had this mentality of kind of just, you know, save everything as, as much as oh, possible yeah, for the future. Go. Why who said something? 
Oh, he <laughs> the did raw that egg over the heart Yeah. Oh, Sandra did that. Uh, the raw e- the raw egg over hot rice. That's cool, huh? I would like to experience that. Um, but but along with that, it's like yeah, you know, save all your money, do all these things. But as I'm getting older, I'm like, you know, uh, as I'm thinking retrospectively, I'm like, I don't remember how much a lot of things cost in my past. Like some of the things that were like some of the best experiences I've been in. I don't really. Sometimes I remember because sometimes it's expensive, but so, sometimes I don't usually remember. Yeah. Like, was it two hundred? Was it three hundred? And I'm like, if that means so little to me now, why not start taking advantage of that uh, of that retrospect now in the current body? You know, why not just enjoy certain things? As long as I'm good, you can pay your bills, you, you can pay pay all yeah. your expenses. Yeah. Everything's good. Everything's covered. Why not just view the world through the eyes of yourself a year from now, five years from now, 10 years from now, you know, why not have these experiences? So this way, you know, you're not really going to be thinking about what was the point redemption? What was the cash redemption? What was all that stuff? Um, might as well just go and do it. Um, which That's what I'm one place I want to go is, uh, is Japan. And I guess you've been there. Dude, you have to. <laughs> so, I've been there a few times. Like I, I almost considered moving there. Wow. Oh, actually, no, I did consider moving there with my girlfriend. She applied for jobs and everything. Whoa. But then that was right before COVID hit. So then oh. COVID hit, and they we're like, okay, well, obviously we can't uh, do this. So, yeah. Japan's amazing. Maybe I'm biased. I'm Japanese, but oh, no. it's amazing. So, so I've had this question for a long time. Hands on your list, John. Iceland's <laughs> on my list. Let's go. I'm put, I put it on my list. Um, I've had this question for a long time. Ever since I come across your channel and your name, Chase mm-hmm. Yokoyama, I said, okay, that yeah, sounds yeah. oddly Japanese. I said, yeah. so what's the, what's the deal with that? So, yeah. so is there a, a, a subculture of, of Japanese people who are in uh, Hawaii? Or is this just like a, a thing where maybe your family moved, etc.? Okay, wait, sorry, you, you cut out, you like glitched out. Maybe oh. it's, a, it's a in in Japanese people in Hawaii subculture or what something else? Or is it just something where your parents moved? One, you know, one day. Oh, okay, it's, yeah. So good question. I would say outside of Japan, Hawaii is where you're gonna find a lot of Japanese people. Huh. Um, they, they, you know, don't get me wrong. Tourists from all over the world go to go to Hawaii, but yeah. it's definitely a very heavily Japan, not favored, but like focused hmm. place to go. Like, there's a ton of there. There's a ton of Japanese people there. So my parents did not move from Japan to Hawaii. Um, it was like my great grandparents who moved to Hawaii from Japan. Um, so oh. like, so my grandpa was born and raised in Lanai, which is another island in Hawaii. Hmm. Then my mom and her sister were born and raised in Oahu or on Oahu. And hmm. I was born and raised on Oahu. So it was my great grandparents who did the was it migrated migrated like a bunch of whales. Is that the right <laughs> word? Wait, is that the right word? Why am I I'm like blanking. Is it immigrated? They immigrated from Japan or you can, I think you can say migrated. <laughs> uh I think you can say like, like we're at, okay well you yeah you you get the point i guess but yes. they're the ones that came from japan to hawaii because also when hawaii was i guess growing up there was a lot of like japanese workers here who came to work oh. like the um was it the pineapple fields sugar sugar um or oh, emigrated okay thank you mr is that the right word emigrated emigrated if it's from a place um but yeah. anyway, they, they came from Japan. I think they yeah. worked on like the sugarcane plantations or pineapple plantations, something like that. Oh, wow. Yeah. So and that's, actually, yeah, I'm oh, sorry. Go, go. Sorry. So, so that's, that, that's just interesting right there. So like some sort of pineapple farm they worked on? Yeah. So, I mean, still popular now, but there is like before it got really developed, Hawaii especially Oahu was just filled with like pineapple fields or like sugarcane fields. Huh. And I think that was like the, the cash crop here. Wow. Um, so actually, so if you drive up, like there's a dough cannery on Oahu. So if you're going to like the North shore from town, so basically from the city on the South to like the North point, you go past dough cannery and you can see like, um, pineapple fields. It's, it's, it's a really nice drive. 
Hmm. Just, yeah, it's so beautiful. No, the reason I found that interesting was because, uh, you know, I learned um, not too long ago that, you know, being in some of these southern states, uh, specifically like the, the coastal states, like, um, uh, yeah, the coastal areas, like uh, <laughs> SpongeBob, um, like Charleston, they, uh, they always tout like, hey, in the early 1900s or, or late 1800s, like pineapples were the symbol of wealth. Like if you had pineapples, oh, wow. you were... You, you know, you were somebody. And, and if you look at all the, the architecture that's in some of these Southern cities, there's a lot of pineapples uh, on like the fencing outside of the house. Yeah. It's a whole, it's a whole big thing. Um, they, they, they would like hang it up and then have it, uh, you know, like parties and stuff. And then at the end of the party, they'd take it out and have it for dessert. So it's a, it's a real big thing. So I guess if you were a pineapple farmer in Hawaii in the early 1900s, you'd probably make it bank. <laughs> you probably. Oh yeah. I mean, thank for yeah. the wealthy folk. No, they definitely were. And, of course, they were taking advantage of unethical labor, but okay, yeah, right. was, <laughs> but that's that's the reason why I guess my or there was a bunch of was it not foreigners, but like yeah, out yeah, people came to Hawaii to work on those plantations for a better life because to them it was a better life, and then of course yeah, there were people making bank from that for sure. And Mr. Mr. says pineapple art also means you're a swinger. Don't ask, Don't ask how no. no. It's very true, but you got to turn the pineapple upside down. That's actually a real thing <laughs> that they told us about on the tour. Um, so, so with this history, then, do you speak Japanese? I do. Well, okay. So, not because my parents speak it, oh. because they're very. So the thing, like in Hawaii, there's, um, I mean, yeah, there's Japanese people, but there's also something we, we refer to them as like like local Japanese, hmm. meaning they're not from japan but they grew up here or sorry they grew up in hawaii so they're like local japanese because if oh. you were to take someone a local japanese person and compare them to a actual japanese person you know that from japan totally different hmm. um so there's like a local like oh he's, they're local japanese um so the reason why i well, first of all, I don't, I can't speak very well, but I could, I could read hiragana, katakana, some kanji. Yeah. I could understand some, I could talk a little bit. It's because I studied it in high school. That's oh. why. Um, wow. Because my parents, my family did not talk it, talk Japanese, unfortunately, because another thing that I learned studying abroad in Copenhagen yeah. is there's something wrong with the United States education system because those people in Europe, for example, guarantee by the age of like 11, they're going to know at least three different languages fluently, you know, or pretty damn good. Yeah. Whereas us in, in the States, it's almost frowned down upon to learn more than English, you know, yeah. which is wild because I want to learn more. You know, I want to be able to talk to these people in other languages besides English. So I wish growing up because that's when you learn the best is when you're a kid, uh, hmm. different languages is I wish I grew up around different languages besides English, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That was the other thing. They're like speaking English, German, you know, Croatian, Danish, all, like all this other stuff. I'm like what the heck? Spanish. I won't oh, forget it. No matter what. Yeah. It's, it's yeah, just, can you, can you, you, yeah. Can you speak other languages? Uh, yeah. Just, uh, English and Chinese. Oh wait, that's actually pretty good. That's <laughs> it's impressive. Not it's not bad. It's not bad. But Did uh, you study it. That's why. Or? Yeah. So same. Uh, yeah. Well, no, not school. I I self studied um, when I was. I think I started right around seventeen, and and went pretty much, or no, maybe seventeen or eighteen, and I went hard till about twenty. So it was like a two year stint uh, of just constant, um, just learning through my phone. And, uh, you know, using apps and stuff and then eventually graduating those apps and then uh, talking to some people on, um, there's an app called HelloTalk and that one allows you to connect with anybody all over the, wor the world. They're learning your language and you're learning their language. Oh, so it connects you so two cool. together. So I made so many friends in Taiwan and, and, and China and the mainland um, that, uh, you know, yeah, because you jump on calls because you, you learn through the words. But then you got to put that into action by speaking yeah. to somebody, especially a, a native speaker. So that was that was kind of how it was. So it was just a crazy obsession for, for two years, um, you know, like two, two, three hours a day, something like that. But yeah, it was it was a cool time. That, <laughs> I'm curious to know, everyone in chat, write down how many languages you could speak. The highest one 
Anthony will buy a Tesla for. <laughs> oh my God! Deal. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, will buy a Tesla, Tesla for some. <laughs> oh, Lord. Because, yeah, yeah it is so impressive. Well, first of all, is it Mandarin or Cantonese or both? Uh, Mandarin, yeah. Mandarin? That's so sick. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. Cantonese is like a word, like a, well, a sentence I have, and that's about it that I learned. Okay, through. yeah. But um, I speak one. CJ, get with the program. Barely, CJ, let's be honest. Barely one. <laughs> barely, <Let's> yeah, barely, <laughs> really, CJ. <laughs> Are you rounding up there, buddy? Surrounding, <laughs> surrounding uh, error, right? Surrounding <laughs> <laughs> one, one language. That's Juan. Thing. I need to, I need to learn um, um, Spanish. Spanish while I'm here. It's true. <laughs> or pick up at least some. My God. Yeah, we. How? Yeah, guys. Seriously, I want to know how many how many languages you guys speak at, out here. Um, Chad was like, right. I, "I told you that was awesome." One language. It's funny, you know. I, I've also I've always been a lover of, of languages. Um, ever since I was very young, and, 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 <laughs> yeah. speak the language, language of love. love. Ooh. Ooh. Um, but when I was in New York, when I lived in New York, I was a driving teacher, um, and of course, New York's a melting pot. So I I drove with every like how many countries are there? 187 countries. I probably drove with about 100 countries of people That's who have hit my car to learn how to drive. So I like. I picked up like one word in like a lot, like 30 languages, something like that, but I yeah. maybe not care if you, maybe 20, 25, something like that. But it was always just something like, cause I found that when you, when you were able to even just say one word in someone else's language, it opened them up and they, yeah. they feel comfortable with you, you know, immediately. That's, yeah. You know, <laughs> that's it. Yeah. That's, that's a good tip actually. Yeah. Learn at least one word or even if you're feeling fancy, one sentence and you impress them. Yes. So, so, so now, now here's your task. Anthony. Learn one sentence in Japanese and go to Japan because they um, love it when you try. They they love it when you try. What does she want? Okay, well, you said she asked as a question. <laughs> think, but oh, is that was, a question? That was, yeah, yeah, I think I'm Anthony. Yeah. And, but you got it, though. Yeah, there you go. Uh, Boom. That was good enough. <laughs> um, zim, zim, wakari, zim. I think that means, like, I don't I don't know what's going on. It's like yeah, it's a million anything. different things. <laughs> what, zim, zim, wakari, zim, I think is what it is. Uh, it's like I have no idea what the hell's going on. What is it? Nihongo gen? No, no. A genki deska. And then oh, genki deska. Yeah, like, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Yeah. As long as you know, like, excuse me, or just, you know, like, excuse me. Mm. Then it's like it's it's good. Or like you know, of course, arigato. Right. Konnichiwa. Yeah, stuff like that. Boom, you're in. Gotcha. You're in, right? <laughs> you're in. That's, <laughs> That's all you need. That's funny. Uh, Keith says one. Mr says which country was the worst driver? Oh my god! <laughs> oh, that's. <laughs> <laughs> it's you know this is not the that's, first time I've gotten this question, so I got answers pre prepared. <laughs> all right, listen, guys. This is this is where we get into driving school, Anthony. All right, I, and he's not racist. Natural. He's just he's just he's been through it. Okay, with every every culture you can imagine. Yeah. On average, here. All right, so we'll break it down on like this. Average. On average, the <laughs> oh my God. the best male drivers in the world were uh, men from Nigeria and men from Mexico. Man. And <laughs> and here's another funny thing. represent. If and this is not even a joke. I, I'm literally not joking when I say this. I have to preface because you know the culture we're in now. If the people I was driving with from Mexico were not citizens. They were better. They were the best drivers. They were better than the ones that were citizens. And they would tell me. They would tell me the stories of how they actually That's jumped crazy. the border and they wow. they got in a car with like pizzas and it was like a three day drive. It was great. I had the best time with them. Um, for for women, Albanian women were the best drivers. Uh, they they were they were really good. For the worst drivers, unfortunately, it was Nigerian women. They were the worst and they were the scariest. <laughs> they 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 were driving too fast. <laughs> too crazy and uh they all knew it too and i would tell them <laughs> i was like you guys are too crazy <laughs> they <all knew> and <laughs> they knew it too um and and actually egyptian women uh were were the worst wow. yeah they were um the men were usually okay but they were also a little too crazy too like you couldn't get them they couldn't get their frame of mind straight from what i remember um but the women they were fast to learn oh my God. Uh, but it's it's a whole. I have a whole database of just how, That's so <laughs> how every country drives. I only drove yeah, with yeah. one Japanese person, however. 
Um, and she was good. She was like a dancer or something in, in, in Japan. Yeah, she was, she was good. Yeah. Um, but it, it's like, it doesn't even matter. Male, female, uh, anything. Like if they were from Pakistan, they were great drivers. Like I loved them. They were very smart. They were awesome. Um, so I, uh, I loved all that. <laughs> oh Lord. <laughs> <laughs> um but uh so 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 on the topic of uh, <laughs> enough driving. about my driving history yeah. um oh sure when did you get your license <laughs> yeah well, 11 not? years old 11 years old wait what no, i'm joking now it was, okay it was, i was gonna was say it's hawaii well, different permit, yeah no permit i think was was it 15 and a half i think and license 16 i think that's how it is it is out there like that. Okay. How how are like the like. how do you how do you learn to drive in in Hawaii? Is it just similar? Like how are the road tests and stuff? So I mean, probably like every city, but there were certain DMVs you'd want to go to oh. because they seem to be easier, and there are certain DMVs which you don't want to go to because uh, I think there's this one back home. I, if I remember correctly, the Dragon Lady. You don't want the Dragon Lady. So don't go to this DMV. <laughs> right. No, I did not go to there. So I went to the easiest, uh, or one, of, uh, yeah, the easiest one supposedly DMV, and I almost failed apparently because around that town that I was taking the test, um, there's like road like construction work going on. Um, mm. like on the street so you had to do some special stuff that I, I didn't know I mean damn why did they have to do construction the day I'm doing my, t- my test so <laughs> there was some stuff that I broke um, you know and then apparently I hit the cutoff point like minus five points or three points oh. it was, but I hit the cutoff and they're like well you, you, you just barely made it but you passed but you yeah. missed these things you know for the construction thing and I was like okay whatever just keep, you know thankfully I got my, my license and we're out of there Wow. Yeah, license. Do you have so, to do uh, parallel park and K turns? See, parallel uh, park. I'm, yeah. I'm beautiful at parallel parking. I oh. love parallel parking. Um, but so that part was easy. I, I nailed that part. Got it. And, you know, I was so nervous to do it. <sighs> I was so nervous. And we had to go there extra early in the morning. Um, you know, so, so I was tired, so I was nervous, and I had to. Go, I went to school right after. <laughs> really? Wow. <laughs> yeah. Most people end up taking off uh, school when they do that. Yeah, I it's a road test no, day. My, my parents did not want me to miss out. And you were sixteen, I'm guessing. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Nice man. Uh, oh yeah, let me let me know, guys, because I know you guys are are uh, you guys are kind of into all this. Like yeah. Keith has a CDL class A. And John said, the only thing I failed was parallel parking, passed everything else. How many of you guys actually passed on your first try? <laughs> How many? Because I've been through like probably a-, a thousand road tests with people. So I, I know the feeling. <laughs> I know how that feels, man. It's, uh, it's-, it's nervous. It's nerve wracking. I, got- I used to get nervous for the students. It's um, so nervous. Yeah. But I know what you're saying with uh, someone said Dragon Lady might be racist. Uh, MR said that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, John got it a first try. CJ first try. Hmm. Not bad. Hell yeah. Well, we're going to have to first drive try. together. Did you get it on the first try? Uh, see. Mr. Instructor. <laughs> I used to have students that would ask me this. And I said, listen, I would love to tell you that I had this whole success story and I failed and I failed again. And I kept trying and I persevered. But no, I just, I passed on the first try. <laughs> I, was, right. I was good. But my dad was a driving teacher. So... I also had a little bit of a helping hand there. So. Yeah, you, you had a yeah. reputation to uphold. Yes, I couldn't <laughs> disappoint the family dynasty. You know, his yeah, his he was a driving teacher, and his daddy before him, and his daddy yeah. used to teach on horses yeah. and horseback. Way back. <laughs> Our lineage. <laughs> um, no, it was yeah, it's it was good times. So that's that's funny. Um, oh, first train to the Bahamas. That's right. That's CJ's from the CJ. Bahamas. My God. Hey, you got two licenses. Not bad, not too bad. Uh, MR also got first try, uh, Fireboard first try as well. Um, so, so, <laughs> so is this like how is your mindset mindset shifted? I kind of told you um, a little bit earlier, like you know, why not pay for the things now for for the life experiences that I can take with me for for life? Is there any like did you ever have a moment? Because I, I was curious about this before the stream. Did you ever have a, a moment in time where you were like? 
like, I don't know, a little more carefree with things and maybe just say, you know, I you literally you only live once. Let me, uh, let me do what I can now. Like, do you have any mm-hmm. philosophies on that? Yeah. So um, I think honestly, when did it start? Well, I'll just tell you, I'll tell you my philosophy on those types of things. And then I'm trying to remember when it started, but okay. So my philosophy on those types of things is of course I got to disclaim you got to still be a little bit financial response, financially responsible, yeah. right? Don't go yeah. blow out your savings and like, you know, buying all kinds of crap, like first class tickets and stuff like that. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. So, so there's a happy medium to this, but I think you should be spending more if they will, at least for me, the way I spend a lot of my money yeah. is on experiences, things and that, you know, that's stuff from like even going to like a concert, you know, eating certain food, traveling is the biggest one you know spending money on those types of things is to me at this point in my life so important you know because i could die today tomorrow whatever i don't know when i'm gonna die and i could take those experiences to the grave but you know the x amount in my bank account or whatever even investments like that's you know i can't take that with me So my whole thought was I need to experience these things while I'm alive, while I'm healthy. Um, You know, I'm blessed to to do these things Yeah, because it could be taken away, you know, like something could happen where I can no longer go somewhere or do certain things. So, I mean, don't get me wrong. Like I said, I like, I like materialistic things too. Like, you know, it's cool to have certain brands or, you know, certain, I don't know, like decoration cars whatever but again yeah. like it's a happy medium it's like there's a tipping point where it just doesn't make sense like it doesn't matter mm. you know you know yeah so i try to spend a lot of my money on experiences I'm sorry. nowadays <laughs> chambermaid is taking a power <laughs> nap. they're asking is there somebody be- behind me <laughs> yeah. should i pan no <laughs> just kidding oh, she, has, no, she doesn't want me man. to pan <laughs> nobody in that bed just kidding they, they called you the chambermaid <laughs> the chambermaid is sleeping <laughs> oh, no. she just said why <laughs> she's sleepy <Okay>. she's sleepy <laughs> Um, that's funny. Um, <laughs> chamber oh, yeah. I've never heard that term before. Yeah, yeah, me too. Um, so that, that's massages, bro. Massages are experiences, <laughs> right? Yes, they are, bro. Oh, Lord. Yeah, that's right, John. Um, so John does. Oh, oh so John travel puts a little account. bit, of, yeah, yeah, he put a little bit of his paycheck in each travel account until I get out of Alex pop up jail and can accumulate <laughs> points for awesome travel, is what I do. Interesting. So you know what, I, I kind of have a question. Uh, I, I'm, I'm I'm not fully feeling it from you, but I kind of want to ask anyway. Ha, do you think life has a, a meaning, a purpose? Like for, like for human beings as a whole, or for me? Yeah, in general. Like, uh, is there a reason we're all here? Is there some greater power, or we just everybody just got lucky and now we're here for a hundred years, give or take, and uh, nothing matters. Uh, okay, so I'm definitely on the the camp of. Uh, okay, well, first of all, I'm 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 not a religious person. I'll just say that. Like, I, I didn't grow around, grow up around any sort of religion. I did go mm-hmm. to a high school where, like, oh, we went to chapel every Monday morning hmm. um, and stuff like that. But I didn't grow up going to church or grow up like doing Buddhism or something like that. Um. But for as, as far as like life having meaning, I, I mean, I like to, I, for this kind of stuff, I like to think about how I carry myself through life. And that is by like, okay, trying to make a difference in, in the world, or like a positive difference All right. around <laughs> the people, you know, or, or to this world, you know, mm. like obviously, okay, I'm, I'm, I am participating in pollution and all this other stuff, you know, but like go around try and be a happy person you know like like we talked about before go and do doing buddhism <laughs> you know what i meant um, right 
Um, mm-hmm. but experience experiences like that's the meaning of life to me is like go out there you know interact with other human beings uh, learn how they live life try and you know empathize with them mm-hmm. um just like it's, it's, have a good vibe have that aloha spirit bro it's just like go out <laughs> there and make a positive difference you know to the world around you i know you're gonna have some bad days i have bad days you know it's like whatever but for like nine days out of the 10, try and, you know, be happy about it. And cause that's, that's, you know, you are in charge of your life. I know there's stuff you can't control, but you could change like the framework of how you think, see things. Yeah. If you always see it as optimistic or find the, the better things or, you know, in life, then I think you'll have a happier life, you know, like, yeah. So I don't, yeah, I can't say, oh, this is the meaning of life. I don't know exactly. Yeah. I just, I, I believe I'm in control. That, if that's another thing too, like, you know, like, like signs. So, so here's, here's, another, here's a perfect example about signs. Cause you know, there's people out there, which again, I'm not like disrespecting any of them, but there's people out there yeah. who believe in signs, right? Like, oh, that's a sign. Like, so right. Yeah. Moving to LA, there was a few signs, right? First sign was Hurricane Hillary was coming up. And it was going to be in SoCal the same day that my original flight was going to be yeah. be booked, which is which is unheard of. I mean, that SoCal is having like a hurricane, even in like a tropical storm type of thing. So that was like, oh, one sign you shouldn't move to LA. The second sign was my flight getting delayed by eight and a half hours on the the you know the morning of. And I was like, there's another sign. I think there's another sign too, but hmm. I, I don't believe in that kind of stuff. I believe in I guess the mantra of you're in control of things. Hmm. And like, so, you know, if something does happen, it's like, okay, well, what can I do going forward? You know, like it happened. Okay. I, I couldn't control that. Just don't think about it. Don't think that, oh, okay. It's a sign that I shouldn't do this or it's a sign that I should do this. Like, no, I'm in charge of what I can and cannot do. Or, you know, I'm in charge of my fate. Yeah. Um, and to give more background on this, I did this recently, like the, the Myers Brig, Bridge. Oh. Myers Brig personality test wait a second wait a second yeah and the mbti this is this is where i like to type people (laughs) this is where i did okay so i didn't know you were into that all right so usually what i'll do is i'll i'll look at you and i look at your facial structure and i kind of base that that has an impact yes so i have this whole (laughs) theory together that so so people aren't aware mbti myers-briggs uh two people um it's actually two different people who created the system And they have a subset of 16 different personalities that you will fall into. As MR says, he's an ENTP. Interesting. Yeah, those guys, those ENTPs, are, they're usually uh, they're, they're able to, to dance with a lot of different situations. They're usually very, very smart and funny in that way. Um, and usually those people, in my framework, their facial structure is usually much more narrow and rectangular. Usually those are the... Mm-hmm. Um, those are, those are what those people look like. Um, however, for you, I don't know, man. I think you're with your okay. facial structure. I think you're probably an IS. Uh, am I on there? The right track so far? You're totally wrong, Anthony. Totally it's wrong. Not, yeah. I know you ain't no INFJ, man. Sorry, <laughs> but you know, and I, I no, I'm I thinking know, yeah, I'm not, the, the first. Le- sorry, the first, even the first letter was off. really wrong yeah that's surprising with how introspective okay so so i i'm not sure let's hear it so i did it i did the test because i had no idea i did it in college for a class and they got yeah. an answer yeah and i totally forgot about it until recently my girlfriend's mom did it and she's like oh i'm this you guys should do this and i was like i remember doing that so yeah. we did it again like two weeks ago three weeks ago whatever and then i compared the answers from college and now and they're yeah. both e n t j and then, so of course, I had to look up what what that all meant and everything. And, um, huh. So I was yeah. I, I did think that initially, but I think staying the credit frogs in any NTJ, but your facial structure seemed a little different. Just seemed a little different. But okay, so ENTJ, interesting, yeah. interesting. So so in that case, uh, does it actually follow suit? Like how? How much of a planner or how organized are you actually to your type? I try to, well, like, I would show my calendar, but I think there's, like, like personal stuff on there, like, stuff yeah, right. people yeah. knowing exactly what I'm doing. But, yeah, I plan out my days, like, oh, I should be waking up 
at this time this uh-huh. is what time i should be eating dinner lunch doing tasks maybe even like showering or go to the gym um of course it doesn't always fall in like i don't always follow that yeah you know, but you know ha- having this meeting schedule of course you know like most people would would have that scheduled anyway um i have like a to-do list a fat to-do list that i check every day and wow. i have stuff and i have to do all all that kind of stuff and when it comes to trips like i'm the i'm the planner like i, yeah. I want to make yeah. sure we know what we're doing <laughs> um or even like you know school projects or like for this house talking with my roommates and stuff like like the organizer like okay we need this this and this like you know we should be doing this uh this is what we need this is what i should be doing uh so i think i lined up with that part as well and i think entjs too like since i already talked about like oh they don't usually believe in or aren't like religious or something like that hmm. um, Really? So I was like, okay, yeah, that, that's my case. Uh, what else is there? Oh, like emotionless or hard, hard with emotion. So I'm a very <laughs> blunt person. Uh, so like if someone's doing something, like I don't really a lot of the time package it in a nice way. Yeah. I'm just like, say it how it is kind of. Um, or I say things without thinking about how they might feel. Not like I'm being mean and just like pissing on them, you know, but just like, um, <laughs> I guess right. it's like, I don't, my emotional intelligence is trash basically is, is what I'm saying. So that's yeah. something I'm trying to work on and being more in tune with my feelings too. Cause I like, I usually like push them away and just like, I, I just get stuck up in the work and once I'm, locked in into something i'm gonna i'm gonna see it through you know i like solving problems yeah uh in like so, a group project yeah i'm like we gotta do that like split up the stuff like we gotta do this this and this and like i'm the one checking up on people like how's it going like uh, you know, you need help like uh you know making sure it gets done right i'm like okay what do you need help with how can how can we get this how can we achieve this goal you know this is what we should be aiming for I'm right. competitive. I'm super competitive. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I mean, a bunch so of this, yeah. this is funny because because well, even in the first point, like you just told me your type, I said, okay, so how much of a planner organizer you? Uh, yes, the answer is yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so so isn't it funny how how, how accurate that is? And everything you just said is like yes, that's absolutely. And just knowing Stan a, a little bit more knowing that he's exactly the, the same way as you are with, with planning things. How funny that that is. Now, now you also mentioned like yes. emotionless almost. Now, it's yeah. funny. The, the, the interesting thing about your type, which I like, is is you're very, uh, you know, very, you're very expressive and, and you're very analytical and you can get things done. Yeah, so you I have know. all the, you have the fire, uh, you know, you, you almost like you have a really developed like fire chart, like moving. Um, yeah. but, 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 but yeah, your emotion side, you're an introverted feeler in your fourth slot. So it is your weakest category and all of your emotions technically in, in introverted feeling is based on your own and you're not so worried about other people's reactions to your emotions. That's why you're oh, yeah. not afraid to say things to other people. But the fact that it's in your fourth slot means, yeah, you really don't care. <laughs> you, you really don't yeah, care. No, I don't, yeah, I don't take things personally, like I yeah. mean, you know, stuff like that. Also, Tyree, um, was it? I'm a Libra. Libra, We're interesting about that stuff. Yeah, I'm an October baby. Hmm. Um, late, late born. Oh, and Emily oh, yeah, said, so, uh, "Oh, sorry, go ahead." No, no, no. I, I, I can talk after. Yeah, so MR said, uh, we're scoundrels, don't trust us. The NTP is, yeah, I don't trust you guys. I know you're a little dastardly. <laughs> Keith says he's an ENFP. Dastardly. They're a little dastardly. Keith's an ENFP. Usually you guys are very hard to nail down, like very hard to get on a straight and narrow conversation, which is my experience in the past, but probably less developed ones. And then John's an INTP. I kind of figured that actually oh, yeah. on your on your facial structure. Yeah, yeah. Because I am one of them, so... <laughs> I'm, I'm an INTP. Yes. You're INTP. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. It's been like that. So, for, what what are the, hmm. the facial structures of an INTP? T- typically, how how you kind of see me, we're not. Uh, you know, usually the facial structure is is a little bit boxy and slightly rounded at the bottom. Um, and also the width of the head matters. Like if my head looks like this, but I'm skinnier, 
I'm now an ENTP in my in my framework. It's a little bit wider, maybe slightly yeah, rounder. You got bust on a ruler. <laughs> really I did the huh? protractor, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> With the you angles. Calculate all the angles. Usually, we're a little bit soft uh, body wise because we're not we're so heady that we're not usually in our bodies. Um, so it's very often a lot of us just kind of not usually we don't usually work out and we usually are a little bit soft in our in our in our physiques um, until we can learn to ground you know ground through our you know maybe like a root chakra or, or something. But usually we're so yeah. schizoid in our head that that's what ends up like this gets very developed, but but everything else kind of falls by the wayside. But um, oh. those are the kind of the we're just floating heads for the most part, and that's why emotions are usually tough. That's an acquired skill for for a lot of us. Um, that's relatable. Yeah, really. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. um, wow, Mister Driving Instructor. That's the only reason I can talk to people. Too. Yeah, man, I love that. Stuff. I love all of it. Um, uh, and and Keith says, "Hi, you'll never you'll never get a committed answer it's from me unless I get to for it." Yes. Honestly, like I, I base all, fortunately, I'm like FI people like Chase. I, I can't be friends with them. If they're selfish, yeah. they don't care about it. No, I'm kidding. But um, like Calvi, he is an ENFJ and his first spot is the pretty much the opposite of yours. So he's FE. Everything he cares about in life, his first thought in his mind is how can I make other people feel comfortable? How can I make them feel better? Yeah. You know, how can I assist them? And that's where he gets all of his... Uh, great feelings in life that's when he's happiest um usually these people are good you know good parents you know a little overwhelming but they're they care a lot about other people so he's yeah, he's a good cat dad yes guy. <laughs> right yeah yeah that's right um that's funny um you know kind of kind of on this top, huh oh chase does care he was going to rage oh yeah yeah you know? damn amex Speaking of, someone actually asked, are you, uh, it, like, is your real name Chase Yokoyama? Someone told me, like, you might be named Amex Yokoyama or something. That's, here, I'll show you my ID, okay? <laughs> but I'm going to make sure I cover up Just all don't the leak anything, yeah. information. <laughs> right. Right. I don't know, man. I, I'm wondering, like, is this name really Chase? Like, of course, obviously, it's credit cards. Maybe you just did that, you know? I think his name's Amex. God, I don't know if you <laughs> I can't even see anything. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell is that? I like I can't see okay, a damn thing. Is there a better? Yes, my name is Chase. Listen, Wait, man. My passport's better. Hold Maybe on. your credit cards oh. might have your name. Oh on yeah. There. <laughs> I know, but can't... people could fake that, right? I'll show you my. Yeah. Credit... Here, I'll show you my credit card though. Here. Oh yeah. Wait, where's not a business here? card? Look at this, CJ. If you're even in here, it's oh gold. Oh, oh gold. let's go, Team Classic Gold. <laughs> of course. Hand wow. Model. Bro, my hand, hand dude. So here's the thing, John. I have dry skin, and what are these? these are called cuticles or something, right? Like yeah, around yeah, here, yeah. dude. Yeah. My cuticles are trash, especially in LA. Ew! Like I can't. Don't say ill. <laughs> what do you mean ill? I thought you don't get offended. I thought you don't get offended, Mister. Oh, too. <laughs> to my nails, but I think it's some other <laughs> credit card. Oh, you right, said that. But anyway, it's like, yeah. yeah, it's like drying <laughs> up. So I need to like get nail clippers and and take care of that. <laughs> anyway, um, yes, my name is Chase. I, I yeah, um, cool. I have my passport here, but again, I think it's. I'm gonna have to like blur out a bunch of stuff. Yeah, you won't be able to see it. So, All right. uh, I, I, I my social I trust, security yeah. number. Anyone want to see that? My social that, security card. Hey, <laughs> that could help. That could help. <laughs> but yes, my real name is Chase. I don't know. I actually, I don't know why my mom named me that. I didn't ask. Did you ask like your parents why your name? Anthony. You are? Um. Well, story. Actually, uh, <laughs> um, I think I. Okay, I think this is correct. <laughs> I think this is correct. So, unfortunately, uh -huh. I think there was a kid before me, who I think was a stillborn. Uh, oh, so he didn't make it, unfortunately. Right. Um. Uh, I mean, it's. I mean, I didn't know, so it's fine. You know, sometimes some say I absorb this power. I'm just kidding. Yeah, um, but <laughs> but apparently, <laughs> oh, horrible. It's horrible. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. That, yeah. I heard. Uh, yeah, I yeah. heard his name. His name was going to be like Vincent, uh, and then they weren't going to name me that because it's just I don't know. Maybe it's just not right. Like you, you lost someone and you can't. Yeah. So they made that my middle name. So my middle name is Vincent. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. So so we got so so then they gave me Anthony. Um, and so, I don't know why, to be honest. It, okay. It's like 
it is a common name in New York, though. Not anywhere else, but apparently and in New York, I always had three Anthony's in a in a classroom. <laughs> three. Uh, Interesting. Um, switch that ugly card to rose gold, and your cuticle issues will go away. CJ, <laughs> <Yeah. I'm> just... <laughs> cuticle mishap. Oh, damn, I'm desperate. Maybe I do need to switch to rose gold. That'd be nice. What's What's it like? To have nice cuticles. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Are these nice? I mean, they're pretty well kept. Those are... <laughs> it's just like the nail emoji. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this, is, this is a beauty live stream. I have noticed, yeah, though, uh, I think it I think it might just be, you know, again, not to be racist, it might be an Asian thing. I notice a lot of Asians That's do have so bad racist. cuticles. I'm sorry. I'm just, you know, it's what I notice. You know? <laughs> driving instructor uh, yeah I listen the hands are on the wheel you know they're they're slimy see. little cuticle hands all over the wheel <laughs> you're leaving behind cuticles all over your car you damn agent it's gross tell <laughs> disgusting <laughs> take that and go back and put them in your raw eggs right <laughs> oh, God. put that yeah put that over your rice <laughs> yeah <laughs> Does. Okay, well, I'm glad it's well, not a me problem. <laughs> it's just, it's just you were born that way. What can you do? It's a genetics. Born that way, you, you know. know can't do anything. You know. <laughs> um, you'll live a long time, so that's all that matters. I'm not gonna work. <laughs> I hope so. That's, I that's, hope uh, so. <laughs> yeah, some of the oldest uh, people in the world are Japanese. Um, now their diet is crazy. That's why. Really? That's right. That was one of the reasons why. Right there, because their diet is so clean. With all, really? I think so. And I'm also, well, I think that's it. Maybe I made that up. But <laughs> Did you make that up? <laughs> yeah, maybe I made that up. I don't know. There's something but that I they're doing. I love Japanese food. That's my favorite food. Oh. Or I, I would think so. Which brings me to a good uh, question that we had I mean, from a nice tangent. Discord member. Uh, Discord member asked, it was Keith, actually. Keith came in. He's in the chat right now. Ooh. He oh, said, Keith? Chase, what do you think, man? Sushi or poke? So I know you got strong opinions on this. I do. <laughs> Let me start off by saying this. Mainland sushi, or sorry, mainland poke is nowhere near as good as Hawaii poke. Okay? Huh. So when I go out on the, the random street down in downtown LA or whatever and go to a poke shop, it's probably not going to be good. Not because of the quality of the fish, but because of how you you prepare it or what's inside of it. Huh. So like when I, when I'm looking at poke up here, there's like edamame in there. which is already kind of weird. I think there's like some other stuff. Basically I'll tell you, I'll tell you what makes a good poke. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. So <laughs> of course there's different variations, but one of my favorites is just show you limu poke. So that's just poke. So the ahi, right? Show you or soy sauce, I guess uh, what other people call it, uh, but show you. Huh. Uh, limu, which is like seaweed, it's um, it's not like seaweed, like nodi or like a flat seaweed. Limu is like it looks almost like tree branches, I guess you could say, but it's like huh. crunchy. It's crunchy and salty, yeah. and then some raw white onions, and then maybe some garlic if you're feeling special. Maybe some sesame, you know, some sesame oil. Mix that together. That's a really clean and basic poke. Like if you go out to your store and just put those like five ingredients in in there you're gonna have a much better time eating that as opposed to the most poke bowls you're buying on the street and it's probably gonna hmm. be cheaper too um, of course there's like spicy spicy ahi limu limu <laughs> <laughs> um good but you, yeah. you know there's like spicy ahi poke which is good but i mean um but anyway so going back to the question if i'm comparing like sushi and poke like that i'm used to like hawaii poke um dude it depends on the setting because tell you what <laughs> when you go out see yeah platinum mod hawaii hawaii poke bomb bro that is different you you if you've had poke everywhere else besides hawaii you haven't really had poke like they don't, they don't even do poke in japan because it's like a hawaii thing it's like a i'm pretty sure it was like a hawaii thing because they have oh. like sashimi in Japan and like you know like chidashi yeah. bowls or stuff like that but it's just not poke huh. um but anyway for sashimi versus poke depends on the situation because tell you what when you go to the beach or when you're like just doing takeout or something poke bro when you're going to the park 
it's huh. poke. Go you like you go eat poke. It's like that's literally so the the one of my favorite meals I'm gonna miss eventually while I'm up in LA is going to the beach and you eating a nice poke bowl like the one I mentioned and having a nice like Hawaiian sun strawberry lily koi juice <laughs> like it's like it's like a little yeah. Hawaiian sun it's yeah very specific but that is like an ideal lunch but sashimi i'm not eating on the beach or sushi i'm not eating on the beach but mm. in a restaurant i would probably take a what's it called sashimi because most restaurants like overdo the poke i would say like they try to huh. make it fancy uh, whereas yeah. the best poke spots are the kind where it's just like either like a, a grocery store like this place called foodland good good poke really but like just like local like local mom and pop shops you just go in and it's just like a like a fast food type of thing poke because hmm. when i order it at restaurants they make the poke fancy and hmm. I, like that it's one of the things where like the more simple the better it is but you know when you go to a restaurant i'd rather have so that's why in a restaurant sashimi or sushi i think i forget which was the exact one we're comparing <laughs> all right after this whole yeah. rant um, yeah, and then for like takeout casual, okay, <laughs> all day, all day, because takeout casual sushi sashimi isn't isn't that good, you know. Got it depends. It. it depends. Yeah. And that was my long answer. It depends. <laughs> yeah. But but I think Keith really wants to know, like, if he could only have one for life. Oh my god! Okay, <laughs> okay so so here was it was it sushi or sashimi? Uh, sushi or poke? Yeah, just sushi. Okay, in general. Oh no! I I think I would have I would say uh, sushi because there's more options. Oh, bro! But there's some salmon poke that's so good. <laughs> this is gonna break like you. Some, like some wasabi <laughs> garlic salmon that I had. Oh my god! Ah, I locking it in. It's gonna be sushi. God, geez, Whoa! That was a hard question though. I think it's just because, like I said, with poke, if you you don't need a very you know you don't need much variation there. So I'm gonna get bored of that. Like you, there's like five different ways you can add it, or maybe. But in sushi, there's so many. There's so many huh. different sushi options available. I know it's tough, but sushi, <laughs> Keith, you're breaking my heart, here, guy. Sushi. Oh my god. I see. I I didn't realize this, but you said I think you okay. mentioned on the on the eight hour live stream in Jeopardy uh, that we did with Calvi. Didn't you mention? Wait, is that true? The poke was started in Hawaii. I think so. I mean, should I look that up? Because I don't want to be spitting out facts. I mean, spitting out lies. <laughs> <Don't> lies. <laughs> uh, and Mark says, I love how passionate he is about this. I get it. Uh, yeah. Oh, my God. Okay. See, oh, here, look. I look it up. Everyone, everyone, go on Google. Look up. <laughs> where did Poke come from? It's origin. Well, this is the first uh, link. I don't know if it's reputable, but <laughs> it's, you know, ancient Hawaiians. Uh, we're the Hawaiian, uh, like Polynesian ancestors of the modern Hawaiian people, stuff like that became popular. Yeah, so Polynesian, <laughs> I'll, I'll just encompass right. into Polynesian or Pacific Islanders instead of just Hawaii, but hmm. yeah, that's where it came from. Wow, look at that! Or I guess it made popular. Yeah, so, Wait, so maybe, uh huh. I was gonna say another thing. Have you heard of something called meat jun before? Mm, actually maybe but i have no idea what it is though i might have heard the term at some okay point. so everyone else on google go and look up meat jun it's an a, i thought it was a korean so it's a korean food but apparently it's only a, a local a local hawaii korean food it's like seasoned i guess i think it's beef i forget beef that's like thin and it's like covered in egg i guess is what you would call it like wrapped in, oh. no, no, but it's super good bro yeah. it, it, uh, eggs again <laughs> <laughs> It's cooked huh. eggs, though. It's like cooked eggs. I don't oh. even know how you're supposed to make it. You just got to look it up. Meat Jun. Meat and then J-U-N. Two words. Meat Jun. Yeah. It's so good. That's another good, like, fast food takeout. Um, Hawaii, huh. Hawaii food. Really? Yeah. See, I, I've, I've become uh, exposed to a lot of these things recently. It's, well, not necessarily poke, but but more like uh, sushi. When I, when, I, when I hung out with Calvi, he's, he's like, he knows every, every single culture's food he's had. He's had everything. Um, but he's exposed me to some like one of my favorite things ever called uh, onigiri. Um, oh, yeah, 
Yep. Uh, so I, I learned about this and it's like these little, well, his was like triangles of rice and seaweed and this food. Yeah. That's like the best thing ever. I think I, and I tried finding it. I couldn't find it anywhere in, in South Carolina. You got to make that yourself. And on that I topic, so. Aaron asked about Spam with Bees, another Hawaii thing. What is that? Are you familiar with Spam? The I know in a can, but I don't know. Yeah, that disgusting piece of meat, right, <laughs> that people feed to their dogs or whatever. Yeah. People in Hawaii, you slice, so you get that brick. It looks like a, like literally a brick. Like, who would eat that? Like, where did this come from? It's a brick. <laughs> right. You slice that into thinly, you know, like thin slices, you know, like, I don't know, that thick or whatever. Yeah. Right? Do that. And then you, you pan fry it. You could add, like, shoyu, or, sorry, like soy sauce or, like, teriyaki <laughs> sauce, um, some sugar, brown sugar on it, right? And then you take that spam and you put it on a piece of rice. It's like, like a yeah like a square piece of rice and you wrap that with with nodi like the seaweed wrap oh like like it's almost like sushi i guess like, yeah like a musubi like a rice musubi like like pretty much like a, a onigiri that you're just talking about yeah except it's a spam on the top and again that is so good um i literally had one last week when i was in hawaii wow um, another great beach takeout quick eating <laughs> uh snack i guess you just spam musubi look that up it's good. Um, yeah, Aaron, it's, it's so good. And then it's I love tamago. tamago. Tamago? Oh, yeah, oh like egg, sushi. egg sushi. Yeah, like oh. cold brick. <laughs> so 7 Eleven special. It is, though. It is, is it really? Oh, my God. And, dude, Anthony, that's the other thing, too. You said you like Onigiri. Go yeah. to Japan. You're going to go to the convenience stores. Family Mart, Lawson's, 7 Eleven. They have so many musubis there for cheap, and they're bomb. They're so good. <laughs> like, literally, you could eat – like, you don't have to eat anywhere else besides convenience stores in Japan. And it, I mean, you probably should, though, but but yeah. the convenience stores there are so good. Does spam come from Spig? Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Dude, that, yeah it's, a, it's a mystery meat. That's for interesting. Sure. I, I see. I know so little about any any of this 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 whole Dude, yeah. side of life. But this is good. See, this is experiences. Yes, this I'm. Is I'm trying to. Good. Yeah. I mean, when you go when you go to Piglet, yeah, Family Mart chicken is so good, dude. Japan, you're gonna love the food in Japan. I, feel. I mean, most people do, but yeah. if you just go there for one thing, go there for the food. <laughs> Do you recommend uh, living in those like uh, those those pods? Capsule hotels. Yeah, those capsules. I've never done one. I mean, <laughs> it looks like fun. I guess they seem kind of cozy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, just eat your 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 musubis in there. It'll be nice. That's all yeah. I need. Just be like an anime. Just train. Just do push ups in the one by one. Yeah. Just train. <laughs> <laughs> um. And, I, and some odd question came to mind, and it's not a question I ever thought I would ever meant, uh, like come out of my mouth. But as there's, we're saying so much poke, and someone who's very aware of, of this term poke, is there any any significance to that doll behind you uh, to the left? Sorry, plushed behind oh, you, the, char- oh, the Charmander, the, the, the poke mom. The poke, um, no. <laughs> is there any? <laughs> he's, going, he's going for the Charmander. Yeah. <laughs> there's no significance meaning between between the word and and pokemon for some reason really and hmm. actually speaking about japan my girlfriend well, we went to japan this new year's hmm. you know those claw machines yeah she, she won me uh this from one of those because charizard oh. is my favorite pokemon and i guess charmander you know charmeleon is kind of ugly i don't like how it looks but so Charizard and, and Charmander. You know, it's like Char yeah, Charmeleon's like that weird teenage phase. You know, like yes, cool, yeah. but you're not you know, this is cute. This is cute. And then Charmeleon's like the middle, oh he's cool, trying to be tough, and then Charizard's just badass. I love so, it. So anyway, yeah, so that's where this came from. Um but no affiliation with Poke or Poke Bowls. Yeah, Charmeleon God, is mid. Is mid. <laughs> Char char! Oh my god, that's great! Oh lord! And uh, are you someone that has a Charizard tattoo? <laughs> of course not. No, okay. okay. I 
I'm not that crazy. <laughs> okay. No, no, no. I'm not, I'm not that into. No offense if anyone out there with Charizard tattoos, but might be somebody, but not. Yeah, but... <laughs> not my taste. I know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah no, because I remember. Pokemon. On your uh, Spencer, the podcast you did with Spencer, and you guys kind of went into Pokemon and, and <laughs> so saving money in the game and stuff. So I, I yeah. was reminded of that. You know. yeah. hmm. It's uh, so definitely something I played for, for many, many years. Uh, right. That is a core memory of, like, I remember going. So did you have, like, the Game, po- game Boy SP, the flipping one? Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. one of those. Had, so that and the DS, right? But anyway, growing up, I had the Game Boy SP, and I think that's when uh, Ruby and Ruby and Sapphire were out, like Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald. You know, like Pokemon Ruby. Yeah. Um. So I had Ruby and Emerald, but then I would play that, and then in my um, like all day, all night. Then my mom would come in, say go to bed. So I'd fake sleep. I'd close it. I'd I'd fake sleep. Uh, and when she left, I always would play Pokemon like throughout the night on my Game Boy, like underneath the covers. Yes. Yeah. So it's a huge, like that's yeah. Just like how you said, it's like a childhood memory. See, I, I, uh, well, I also had a memory because Emerald is one I grinded a lot. Um, yeah. Because I wanted to get to Emerald. I think it was called Emerald City, actually. But it was like I, yeah, I tried so hard to get there. Um, you know, and 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 get to that lane. But even prior, I remember Fire Red. Um, yeah, that's right. I had a distinct memory. Uh, MR has no idea what we're talking about. It's just Pokemon talk. It's, <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, that's right. And Sanchu, Sanchu has a, his name is actually uh, it's, it's uh, uh, a lowland Sanchu. Um, you know, I just call oh, him Sanchu. His name's Andrew. That, oh, yeah. Um, I just seen that. Okay. Yeah. That's yeah, right. Pokemon Sanchu. Uh, Chad has no <laughs> Chad, idea. <there. laughs> but I have a distinct Sorry, memory. <laughs> I have a distinct memory. So, so Pokemon was great with their marketing, where they would have the same game, just a different name, and people would buy it. Um, I fell victim to this this marketing because I had no idea, unbeknownst to me. So I remember I I played the hell out of the Fire Red, destroyed it yeah. and everything. Had had my um, uh, uh, Game Shark on there. I connected it to oh, it, so yeah, I had infinite yeah. rare candies and infinite. I remember those uh, everything yeah. eventually, right? Um, and then uh, I remember uh, one day I think we were in Brooklyn. And we went into some random shop. I was like, "Oh, they have Leaf Green." I was like, "Whoa!" I mean, I was like in my mind, I was like, "I'm gonna have a whole new adventure. Like, I'm gonna get the start." And lo and yeah, behold, I, I throw it in the Game Boy Advance. And, and keep in mind, I had the no color one. It was not. It was oh, before yeah. Game Boy in color. Yeah, <laughs> it was yeah, just yeah. Game Boy. Um, and then I eventually got a color. Um, and then uh, and I put it in. And it was the exact same game. I said, "What the hell is this?" I said, "I thought it was a whole different game." Yeah, I said, "The what? thing's green. It's got it's got Venusaur Dude. on the cover. It's not true. What's going on here?" And it's the same game. I said, "You gotta be kidding me." <laughs> I know, dude. That was like some of the hardest decisions growing up. Is which Pokemon version do I get? Mm-hmm. Which legendary do I want to get? Legit. Yes. Do I want the Kyogre, the Groudon, the Rayquaza, like yes. So that was smart. Which one do I want? Mm-hmm. And I want. I used to have a Game Shark yeah. too. <laughs> it's like GTA cheat codes, man. Yes. It rare candy. He said, "Is that like the rose gold Amex card?" <laughs> yeah. Yeah, actually, yeah, yeah, it is. Exactly. Nobody wants the Leaf Green. Leaf Green is like rose gold. Yeah. Um, Pokemon Go Fest. Really? Twenty twenty three. Actually. I know next year they're having the Pokemon, some Pokemon tournament or some convention thing in Hawaii, in on Oahu. I think. Oh, wow! Huh. Since we're on that topic, yes, it's a uh, <laughs> yeah, and I did like Groudon too, by the way. Um, <laughs> Me too. Yeah. <laughs> sorry, CJ. Sorry. I remember even there was actually people. I don't think a lot of people know, but there were games before Fire Red and Leaf Green too. That I played, yeah. it was uh, yellow yeah, and silver. Yeah, on my Game Boy. Yeah, yeah it was, and uh, they had shinies in that game. It was it was cool, um, like a shiny. Uh, I forgot what it was. Oh god, I can't remember. But I remember playing yellow, where where Pikachu actually is your starter Pokemon, like the real yeah. TV show. Oh damn! Yeah, I did. You you played it way back, way back. <laughs> yeah, I was an early early adopter, I guess. Probably right around two thousand. Or probably 2003. I was playing that. Um, Rose Gold is trash. Like says. Um, that's funny. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> watch your language. Sorry, we got to get into some topics sometimes. Just a lot of fun. Um, 
<laughs> what uh <laughs> so so uh when did they discover girls <laughs> um <laughs> what do you mean misty was my girlfriend that's right yeah that's right what do we say yeah misty was my girl. she's not really my type but she's the only girl i, I had I was more Jesse from, uh, you know, Team Rocket. Ooh. I was kind of like, I don't know. I was a little, I was a little more wild. wild you you know? like that? Oh, yeah. damn. <laughs> Still do. Anyway, just kidding. Just kidding. Just, just kidding. Oh, she's, she said she's Googling who that is. Yeah, oh, Jesse's, really? Jesse's kind of kind of hot. Let's be Jessie. honest. Like, she's a little, yes. You, I have good taste. She said it's good taste. That's, yeah, fine. that's good. Come yeah, on, I long hair, it. vitality. Tall, come on, that's tall, uh, yeah. She's tall. Oh well, you're five one, but I mean, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. <laughs> God, um, hey, do you have a question for uh, for Chase? Yeah. I feel do like... we know? Do we know what Amex team he's on? Oh, what classic older Rose? Rose? Yeah, he's he's got. He oh, pulled yeah, it out earlier. We got we got the good stuff. He's got the classic gold. The regular, the regular, regular. Um, Crushing on fictional anime characters. Yeah, at least we all... What? Yeah. <laughs> Hentai. Anyway. Hentai. <laughs> uh, oh, is this the obligatory? Oh, sure. Or uh, this, no, no, no. Yeah, not, that's not it. That's not the question. Oh, well, I, oh. <laughs> the question is. And this is, I've been doing this for the last six streams. Um, okay. Answers are always different. So the question is that that uh, everyone needs to know from you, Chase, and this is what we built up in the, the last oh, hour boy. and a half, is, Chase, are you boxers, briefs, or zipperless pants? Or is it what? What was the last one? <laughs> what? Box, pants? Boxers, boxers, briefs, or zipperless pants? Zipperless that's it. Pants. Well, it's all it's it's brief. It's brief, bro. <laughs> really? I yeah. I wow. I don't like the feeling of it. Of what? Just, just uh, <laughs> having no support. <laughs> right. Let me, let me tell you what, because so, I mean, it's not like I'm a huge fitness guy. I mean, take a look at me. Obviously, I'm not that into fitness, but looking good. But hey, look at that! I got I got protein powder and, and a protein shaker over there, so maybe I am into fitness. Oh know. look, well that's that's a that's a uh, eight ounce shaker, I think. Yeah, which which are actually by the way tangent. <laughs> we'll get back to the box here briefs, but hold okay. on. Okay, okay. <laughs> this is one of the briefs. best. I mean, I don't know about like the whole. I don't know about like the oh the hmm. nutritional facts or like and the actual. Uh, effectiveness of this specific protein, but the, this flavor is so amazing. Like chocolate bliss. Like I've tried Oreo, I've tried oh, like yeah. vanilla, I've tried all. I, I tend to find that most of the chocolate flavored protein powders tend to be the best tasting. Um, tend Optima, but anyway, Optimum Nutrition definitely has the best. Uh, yeah, it does have the best chocolate of, of anything. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but anyway, so I'm a brief guy because I mean, Again, not that I work out a lot, but when I work out, I like to have support when I'm moving around. My children downstairs, <laughs> uh, children. they need they need a house to, to live in um, unless they're just running away all over the place. They're like going in all kinds of directions, Anthony. Um, so That's right. That is a good point. I, uh, I used to know this guy. In, uh, in, we did cross country in high school. So, you know, we're running two to three miles, right? right? Of course, I'm wearing like compressions, compression, whatever, like, you know, the Nike stuff, not the long ones, but like compression yeah. underwear or, or briefs, if I'm feeling risky, I guess. <laughs> but this dude would wear boxers on a two to three mile run. It's not a walk. Uh -oh. We're running. So if you can imagine, <laughs> I don't know how, um, it's like no thing how, how that worked out <laughs> for him, unless it was like just glued up there. But that's the feeling that I'm going after. I don't. I don't like having the. Um, like I said earlier, the kids loose. I like to have them. See, I, I, I never have considered that. The hand motion. 
<laughs> I never considered, yeah. uh, you know, having some sort of a, like they mentioned, a banana hammock, right? So this is layman speak, um, you know, kind of like a, a place where uh, they're not going to be knocked around. Like you think about fighters, uh, you know, maybe wearing headgear, or maybe maybe a skull, like maybe if their brain was bigger, their head wouldn't be knocked into the skull and you wouldn't get concussions, right? Yeah. So, so you think like, hey, the constant pounded poundages that you're you're taking downstairs uh via wearing boxers is is detrimental you're gonna have concussions of the lower half um that's smart i never thought about that (laughs) yeah keep keep it so it's it's a science because you don't i I don't know i want to make this very clear it's not like (laughs) snug right right like goddamn they're trying to breathe for air that's right it is it is um it's a comfortable little tickle you know just holding it there right it's not it's not boxers where it's just like you know just flying all over the place it's not like compressions where it's like right but it's a happy medium where it's 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 controlled but i still have some freedom (laughs) i gotta say you've had the most thoughtful uh well thought out answer uh, of anyone so far (laughs) Um, think about this every time I go to bed. Boxes are brief, Chase. This convo is, a, yes. Like, I, I'm just going to be thinking about, like, wow, that's a really good answer. Like, really logical. Spencer didn't even answer, I don't think. I think he got confused what? and he didn't even end up answering, I don't think. He might, he might not have. This is, this is, yeah, this is game changing. Also, I think someone asked about my, my, my brief, my uh, suitcase, which, of course, I have to. It's a subtle flex. So, hold on, let me bring it. Oh, you gonna show us what you got downstairs? Of course, I have to show. Not oh, uh, uh, oh, just stop. Listen, I'm just just one. Ah, Anthony, you gotta subscribe to my OnlyFans for that. My God. Oh, oh my God. Okay. Hopefully, it's a couple of dollars. I'll uh, subscribe to that. We'll, we'll have a family friend discount for you. <laughs> okay. my friend. Let's go. Okay, so anyway, so this the metal suitcase is a, oh. one of these remote check-in bags. I added stickers on it because I'm so artsy and cool. I like it. Um. But anyway, so Ramoa. Why do you have two-head baby on there? It's cr- huh? Oh, it's because it's edgy and cool, Anthony. I'm a skater boy. Look oh, at, okay. look at this. New York. Only New York. You oh, represent. Very nice. Um, most of there. Yeah, Palace, Supreme, whatever. Um, hmm. But anyway, so I so this this thing right here is so overpriced and so dumb. Like, it is not worth the money. But if you have money to spend, or if you're like me and you're stupid and you're just going to you just wanted it. I think it's it's a it's it's super nice to have because the wheels the wheels on these things are amazing. Here, like like the wheels on these things are so smooth, like it's so buttery. I love the the look. The look is cool. I mean, I know we're trying. We, we talk about experiences and how I don't like materialistic things, but right. this is one of those things where I I, I splurged on. Okay. The look is cool. I like the how the locks are. You know, wow! I mean, like it's like like. Locked down in place, um, but the handle. This this was one of the bigger things for me. Um, so the handle it goes up, and you might think, oh, this is just an ordinary handle you got here. Mm-hmm. But the thing is, you could have the handle go anywhere, you know, in, in this entire range. It's not locked to you know like preset. Oh. So if you want it just a tad here, okay, cool, it locks. If you want just a tad lower, perfect. Oh, but, you know, depending on if I have stuff on here or. If I'm feeling like I'm extra tall today, I'll have the handle. I'll have the handle a little bit higher. Right. Um, wow. But anyway, yeah, it's it's like a a splurge. I had a. I didn't have to, but I I did. Why is that expensive? That that kind of dude. Luggage? Yeah, that thing was like. I have no idea. Like a thousand five hundred dollars or something. What? Yeah. No got, way. Like the, let me see. It was. Wow, that's so dumb. So it's Ramoa. I think it's called the Cabin Twist. That's off. Awesome. Oh, right here, sixteen sixteen hundred dollars. What? I told you it's overpriced. It's not worth it. You wow. Could find, you could find equally as good <laughs> stuff for like five hundred dollars tops. Tops. That's right? crazy. Um, but here's the other thing too, though. That if you care about this stuff, yeah, I bought it. Because I, I always liked Ramal, but I, I couldn't. Uh, does it have a? It does. This one does not have a USB port. Oh. Um, I always thought Ramal was cool. Um, didn't want to buy it. 
but the other thing that people don't really think about is that only recently, like as of last year, July 2022 or something like that, they changed their warranty to make it a lifetime warranty. Whereas oh. up until the point before, it was, um, I forget what it was, but it was, it was not lifetime. Hmm. So it was a good a good time to buy, I guess. Yeah, it was like July 25th, <laughs> 2022. Uh, wow. Yeah, it's, it's, it's so dumb. But, but I, maybe, maybe in, in retrospect. But but what, what brought you to that decision? Because there was something that drew, drew, drew you to it that you're like, it's worth the 1500 in that moment. Like, what was it that really... Right. Right, I like you had. Yeah. To. Well, here's my thought process. First of all, I was in love with how it looked because I've yeah. seen it on like, um, like in movies or like celebrities or something or like I see on whatever. I was like, damn, that's a cool uh suitcase. What um, what kind of suitcase is that? And then there's actually so the a YouTuber called Vicarious Voyager, uh, who's hmm who makes like flight review yeah. videos like the first class stuff um and i love his videos great channel he has this exact um suitcase i saw it in one of his videos so I, and i watched that video like within the past year or two or whatever mm. so then i was like holy crap that's a you know that's a nice suitcase because i haven't seen one of the red stuff and i love red and i was like if I'm going to make flight review videos, because this is what I was thinking about, like I was watching their channels, um, channels I was like, so, so don't tell the IRS, but I mean, that's a, that's a business expense. Too. It is. Yeah. It so is. I wrote that off. Um, so that's another reason why I was like, okay, I, like I'll, I'll spend that 1500 then or whatever, yeah. because I'll, I'll, I'll be able to write it off. I'm going to use it when I do these, these short trips. Like I didn't have a carry on bag before. I just had a duffel bag and I hated Car- like like carrying uh, it with no wheels so having a <laughs> yeah. proper carry on was sick and i mean that that's that i mean that makes let's sense be, let's be, yeah let's be real about a thousand dollars of that price tag is just because it's a remote because i could have bought a, a equally good <laughs> suitcase for half the price tops right but uh, I mean, Whatever. look. I think we got to get you some ROI on it. So I think, uh, yeah. so, so so Chad was like, "What are you holding in there? Nuclear launch codes yeah. <laughs> for fifteen hundred? No, I, I feel so special. Like here, look, look, look. I'll, I'll, open, it, I'll <laughs> open it. And it, it, this is like ASMR. So everyone, turn up your headphones. Headphone warning. But let's let's try to see if I can get a POV. Here, here we go. So, oh wait, don't look at my passcode. Just joking. It's okay. You just open that baby up. Oh, it's so beautiful! <laughs> wow. Wait, it auto closes? No, no, no. That was my hands. I mean, yeah, oh. it does. <laughs> <laughs> it was worth the fifteen hundred dollars. <laughs> um, wow, that's a powerful cl- like clamp there, actually. Okay, so you know how they say that thing about Mercedes doors, right? Like how they, they're some of the best. Okay, I don't know if you've heard that, but there's a thing where people say the Mercedes door, or that, at least the G wagon specifically, but also other lines of doors sound the best, or, or they're some of the best sounding doors. It's like those small things that people don't really care about and they shouldn't, but they do. Yeah. That's this. That's like that feeling, you know? It's like. So. You know, I think all I'm doing is. I'm coping right now that I made a smart decision for fifteen hundred dollars. <laughs> so man, that, what it is. I'm trying so, to make myself feel good about it. <laughs> John was like, "Man, that was some amazing lock action. I need a cigarette now." <laughs> yeah, I need a cigarette. One point five k and it doesn't auto close. Listen, I I think it was a great purchase. In fact, I think we got to get you some better ROA. So I think write it off one, two. I think you ought to just make a travel. Uh, review of it. I think you ought to just do a review. Make it make it like eight minutes. I bet it does really well because not many people have that that luggage. Make a short about it. You make a few right. cents there too. Um, I <laughs> I think I think you can get the cost down to like like at least a thousand probably if you do if you create some content around it and uh, You're right. That's just fine. Do you have referral codes to that? <laughs> <laughs> do, yeah, use my link in the bio down below of this live stream. Go ahead yeah. and use code Chase Chase Yokoyama, not Amex Yokoyama. Right. Down below. 
get get twenty dollars off. <laughs> twenty dollars off, fifteen hundred dollars for the case, and they'll right. maybe throw in a USB port. I don't know. Who knows? Right. But I think I think it, I think that could have been a good smart business decision. That's pretty powerful. Wow. You know what? But, yeah, that's actually a good huh. idea. Not to mention, it. I, maybe it would be like a like a what's in my luggage type of. I like watching oh. those. And yeah. At the same time, it could be like a review or something. I don't know. I think you could do both. Be. I actually think you should just make a dedicated um, reviewing the video? whatever the name of the thing Ryo I forget not Ryo B. <laughs> <laughs> right. Are you talking about Pokemon again? No, no, no. Riolu, Riolu. Oh, oh. Who's no, that? Ramoa, Wait, Ramoa. Riolu, Riolu is the the shorter yeah. version of Lucario. What do you call it? the first? Oh. So there's Lucario, and yeah. then there's uh, Riolu. Oh, I didn't know that, actually. Baby, baby Lucario. Huh. But I think a dedicated, uh, you know, review of it, review of my blah, 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 $1,500 suitcase. I think that would be a good video. Yeah, yeah, Evergreen, too. I'm going to write that down. Yeah, there we go. I'm I'm not going to give you any credit. (laughs) No. (laughs) No cut at at all. Sorry. Just just put my face at the beginning saying, you should make a video on that. And then then that's it. That's funny. Um, <laughs> the truest suitcase, Ryobi Power Tools. Yeah, that's what I was mentioning. Um, oh, re- that if they're one year, two years, <laughs> might as well get some ROI. Yeah, that's honestly, so <laughs> one year, two years. That's right. <laughs> yeah. After oh, one year of having... the, the Amex Platinum of suitcases. That is. Wow. That is. That's a great. Was that Chad that said that? Yeah. Yeah, Chad, yeah. yeah. No, that really is. That really is. That's great. Great ideas. You know, yeah, you could guys. you could you could fit somebody in there if you want. You could say, you know, if you want to do what, that. You could. <laughs> Tell you what. You could. Depending <laughs> on how many times they fold. Yeah, I mean, oh depends lord, how good of a how good of a saw you have. Yeah, it could. Oh my god. <laughs> Who needs so, you know what's in? funny? Um, hmm. I mean, I mean, it's not funny, but so I came up here with. It's kind of on topic. I came up up. I came up here with two suit, two suitcases, right? Two checks. Yeah. One of them I I'm, I had to throw away. I just had to use it just to bring uh, like clothes and stuff up with me. One of them I had to throw away. But I was telling my my roommates like, do you think it'd be weird if we because I have all those trash bags too that are filled with trash. We're gonna yeah. put the trash bags in the suitcase to save space to leave it on the curb. But if someone comes and picks up the suitcases, throw it away, or even just carry it, you're like, why is this suitcase so heavy? And you mm. open up, it's like a trash bag. Why is it a trash bag? You know, because that's how they do bodies and crap, right? Open right. up, the, open up the, the trash bag, and it turns out it's just a bunch of newspaper and um, e- old stuff. Yeah, whatever. there might be. Yeah, I mean. that's like a Joe from you kind of thing. That would end up uh, somebody would find it out, and they're like, "Oh, is there things in this in the bags? Let's open up the bags, <laughs> and it's gonna be a whole problem." <laughs> Throw away the suitcase, the bodies are in. Oh my god. Um. And is that big enough to just be a, a carry on? Or yeah, small that, enough? that fits all the, the regulation, the, air, the airline's regulation size. Hmm. Cool. There's a bigger version of this that's still a carry on, but only is good for like 75% of the airline standards or something. Whereas this one is like, oh, it's good for all of them. Gotcha. Got it. And they have like checked l- luggage and all that other stuff. But that's for rich people because I don't want this thing getting dented underneath the plane. And then we have to pay to get it fixed. Mm. God damn. Well, listen, you got a lifetime that. warranty. You know, that's good. <laughs> that's true, but it doesn't cover dents like that. I would just, I would just honestly uh, say it was broken, get a new one, <laughs> and just sell it. Sell one of them. <laughs> and then get your money, just get your money back. Have some, some arbitrage here. Oh, we're going yeah. to do yeah. a business venture here. A little, little shiesty, but... It could work, you know. Just get it. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, so, so I honestly, this is a, this is, this has been amazing. Um, I, I really don't want to end it, but oh, yeah, I've also, uh, I don't want to take up all of your, your time. I know you're still in the midst of moving and stuff, but I do have one last question for you before we go. Um, we did get to a, actually a decent amount, oddly enough, of the Discord questions. I'm not gonna be able to get to all of them, unfortunately. All right, that's um, fine. but we had no, no, my bad. But uh, we did have a question from Chad, who is uh, actually in here, and he wanted to know, uh, it's for you, Chase, what cereal are we eating when we meet? The answer is briefs. 
Wait, sorry, my AirPods. <laughs> there, I'm on speaker. Sorry. They died. Yeah. Are eating when we meet? Bro, I'm bringing Honey Nut Cheerios. Of course, I. That was a, <laughs> the go to breakfast of champions. Of course, we have Lucky Charms, oh. Frosted Flakes, also very goaded cereals. But I'm trying to be heart healthy, cholesterol low. Right. So we're going with the Honey Nut Cheerios option. And of course, Chad, as you know, reading this dry. No milk involved. No milk necessary. No milk included. We're going. <laughs> Dry cereal, honey nut Cheerios. I've heard I've heard of this on your podcast, with Spencer. Um, and uh, I think, and I think Chad has changed his mind on this whole cereal milk no milk milk thing. Um, it's a little weird. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'll be honest. Never uh, actually, you know, oddly enough, I was at the beach. Uh, I think it was yesterday, and we went there and we sat down and looked to my left. Some dude had a whole box of like it seemed like some cereal. I don't know what it was. Maybe granola or maybe it was honey nut cereals. Um, and he was just he was just taking them by the hand, like a handful, just palming them and just eating them at the beach. And he was having a good time. Like <laughs> that's so funny because that's that's literally what I do. Okay, not at the beach. <laughs> Sorry, not at the beach. But let's say I got to go, like in college. Like okay, I needed to go to class. I'm late. I need a quick breakfast. Breakfast. Put I put cereals in a Ziploc bag and then. I'm just as I'm there, I'm just eating it like this, or like in my first class, Cheerios and Ziploc bag on my desk, eating it like this, bro. Oh, it is, yeah, <laughs> I have no shame. It is, yeah, <laughs> that is great. That is great. No shame, yeah. So maybe you're like that guy. <laughs> that was probably me, honestly. <laughs> I'm down with it too. I just, I don't know, it's very hard for me to eat anything without a liquid oddly enough not hard but i just don't like that. i always have to like have water there or something yeah. you know to, to you know unlike some people i know um <laughs> anyway you know <laughs> um so any uh so this was amazing uh, is there anything that you want to bring up or or talk about or ask about or um, say or ask, <laughs> let me ask you this are you are you a boxers or briefs kind of guy oh no <laughs> Or zipless pants, right? Or um, is it zipless pants? Who, what maniac would say that? I. <laughs> so so uh, so basically, uh, the way I've always done it was, um, it's it's been boxers forever. It's uh, it has been boxers forever. Now I, having heard about this whole you know having an undercarriage to to not allow these uh, yeah. concussions of the lower half, I <laughs> do think. I do think there is some merit to that, and I might actually be disrupting future kids um, by all this, you know, moving movement and running around. You might be right, <laughs> or or I don't have enough of it, so that matters. So, <laughs> but <laughs> whatever the whichever way it, it leans um, uh, or or faces, uh, I think I might. I, I don't know if I could switch though. I just feel I don't know. I don't think I could. I think I got. I don't know. I like boxers because they're just they're very relaxing and they're very uh, they're long. Um, and uh, they're not revealing <laughs> in okay. any way. That is true. Okay, well, well, I hate to talk about me again, but okay. Well, let's see. I, since oh. you brought up long or whatever, oh, usually, usually I I don't go for the brief. Well, this are these are an exception because I don't usually wear these all the time. But I don't like my briefs. I've, I don't want to show too much thigh here, but I know. you know, Gotta I pay I for that. I specifically don't. <laughs> I, none of you guys pay for that. <laughs> um, let's see, Matt. Okay, so this is my scandalous leg here. This is my hip, and this is I guess this this is this is my hip, and these are my toes. <laughs> this is the knee, dude. This is perfect. This is my okay. leg. Okay. <laughs> so here is my briefs right now, yeah. or whatever I would call them, compression shorts, whatever. Okay. Yeah, I don't like these tidy whities or briefs that come up here. So yeah. cause you mentioned you like how boxes are long and yeah. I agree. I think they need to be long. So mine are specifically longer, got it. Longer briefs. I guess you could say just, just so no one thinks I'm a weirdo crotch loving brief <laughs> lover ball hugger. Right. I like mine long. Right? I just showed you the proof right here. I mean, I'll show you again. See, it's, it's going, okay. Well, I'm bending it, but it was like, it was getting close to the knee. They're neighbors down there. So <laughs> Oh, they're they, called boxer briefs. Jeez. They're boxer briefs, dude. They, okay, what the hell? I forgot. I I totally didn't. Okay, that's the answer. That's my answer. Boxer briefs. There you go. Because so a combination. 
There, yeah. Combination. Wow. That's so funny. I'm glad you guys said that because I was looking like an idiot. <laughs> talking about. Yeah. So, okay. There's there's my answer. Sorry. Final answer. I'm glad this came full circle. Yeah. It is Chad. boxer briefs. But the real question is: Do you think boxer briefs are the ultimate, uh, like Capital One duo? Okay, I don't know about Cap- I thought you were going to be like the, the ultimate combination. I didn't know about Capital One duo, but it's, no, it's the ultimate duo. Is is the boxer briefs the ultimate duo? Like, because you have both. Yes, they are. <laughs> yes, this is the best of both worlds. Like, That's right. <laughs> it's a happy medium. Tell you what, go out there. And go buy some box of briefs and try it out, Anthony. Give it a shot. You're not committing to just regular briefs like how I, I, I guess I thought. We were, t- we were talking about the wrong things, but try yeah, box of yeah. briefs. It's a nice dip your toes in. Try it out if you want to come to this side because it's the happy medium between, like, you know, free roaming kids and kids just locked up. <laughs> they have some outside time. <laughs> I'm so glad that you know who was it? It was CJ and who else? It was Aaron, right? That that's or no Sandshrew. Who whoever said boxer briefs? All you guys have said that. Thank God because I didn't know what I was talking about. It's boxer briefs that I like. Right. I didn't even I didn't even know what I wear. But that that is the final answer. I Listen. am, I am very. I am happy it has come full circle. And I think we've learned a lot about ourselves uh, yeah. during this <laughs> during this journey. Yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, and we do know that the next thing for you is going to be um, an OnlyFans for sure. I think that's probably the next this, move. Yeah, this um, was a publicity stunt for my OnlyFans coming up. Right. I'm not going to be able to unsee this stream. <laughs> oh, sorry, John. You're going to have to live with that for the rest of your life. I don't know what it is. I, it must be the host because, like, I it, it around the ninety minute mark is where debauchery ensues, and it's always some, it's always some debauchery. I, like, what's wrong with me that I'm it's like to get delirious? Yeah, <laughs> so we, we learned a little bit too much about each other. Um, oh God! So Chad said, okay. So summarizing, Chad says, so you like the rose gold, and you put milk in before the cereals. Oh, check, someone check CJ. CJ's trunk for CJ. That's CJ summer. Right, right. <laughs> so check CJ's trunk in his attic, uh, and then check the milk cartons. <laughs> oh my God, that's right. Wanted. I mean, uh, not wanted. The uh, missing missing persons on the, the milk cartons. Um, and on top of that, CJ, you don't like seafood, right? Oh, that is true. I think. My guy, what do you have going for you? <laughs> 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 he's just jacked he's just jacked out of his that's mind that's true he's just jacked out of his mind great good skin good personality great on camera <laughs> yeah. um, great microphone that he uses great the, microphone. the voice is deep like yeah he's got a bunch of pillows on his couch <laughs> he does he's he a does. great host that's right editing is great yeah oh that's editing right he is, is a good host yes yeah so oh, oh my god yeah <laughs> I can't. This has been That's, this has been a lot of fun. <laughs> I enjoyed. Yeah, I enjoyed this. Hey, uh, uh, yeah, that's uh, <laughs> you saw <laughs> <through this pillow. laughs> I'm exposing my secrets. What should you buy with your Uber Cash benefits, TJ? Uh, more pillows. <laughs> <laughs> more use get a platinum card use the sax credit for, for more pillows too more <laughs> more <Yeah. pillows. laughs> okay chad yeah that's a different story though chad if you're allergic that's a different story yeah you can't you can't do yeah. it you, you get the pass but cg on the other hand he's not allergic last time i checked yeah and he's he's surrounded by the sea in his home country he's surrounded by the sea down there <laughs> oh yeah, and where he's living. Yeah. Oh god. CJ is just perfect. He's just he's perfect. Yeah, he really is. Oh, <laughs> <He's>, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh Lord. Well and he's not allergic. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. It's okay. We okay. forgive you, CJ. We love you still. <laughs> well <laughs> this has uh been one of the most fun times. Uh, for me personally, hopefully, for, hopefully for you and everyone else watching. Um, uh, so, yeah. <laughs> so thank you, sir, for being here. 
uh, on this two-hour journey. <laughs> oh, uh, it's officially the longest uh, one of these podcasts. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 No, we talk about everything here. We talk about diversity, different yes. traveling, yes. my rigs, you know, poke, boxer briefs, suitcases. Yes. covered everything here yes and then one small segment about pop-up jail <laughs> yeah, what, yeah one small segment that was related to the title of this video yes jail. this has been a hoot but yeah, yeah we got we'll, we'll have to do this uh do this again at some time uh, at some point um and we're gonna go down and get a free burger from the hotel <laughs> yeah look wait hey, wait hold on hey Aaron, are you from hawaii or something you're talking about local mo. You talking about you? Oh, you're dropping all these local gems because I'm Uh-oh. game for a local mogul too. Hey, I didn't I mean, know was a thing. If, I mean, yeah. If he if he ain't from Hawaii, he knows his stuff, man. This guy's. I mean, I think I think I feel like you've commented some of that stuff too in, in my videos, actually. But hmm. and, anyway, yeah. Sorry, this has been a Hooters, it's everyone. It's been a <laughs> thank you. No point to watch. <laughs> yeah, how do you even end? Thanks, appreciate it. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, but no, seriously, thank you so much for being here, man. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Looking forward to more things from your channel and uh, all of your some of your humorous uh, takes in, in the credit card uh, um, in your videos. Also, uh, in a lot of you show a lot of personality and uh, definitely one of the best vibing people uh, out of all the credit card community for sure. And, uh, I think a lot of people appreciate your style for sure. Um, and it was uh, it was good getting to know. <laughs> Could get to know you too on this stream. So yeah, this is fun. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I guess with that said, thank you, Wendy, for the super chat. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> coming in hot at the beginning, and thank you everybody for being here and uh, and, and just uh, having a good time with us tonight. But uh, yes, thank yeah. you everyone. That that was fun. Thanks for tuning in. Dealing dealing with our shenanigans <laughs> here on stream. It was really, it was really fun. <laughs> right. But I guess. <laughs> Until, do you have like a sign off thing that you say at the end of your videos? Yeah, um, go watch my newest video. It's called I Survived 24 Hours in the Most Haunted Hotel. No, no, no. <laughs> Get out of here. Because that's, oh that's what video I'm going to watch right after this. Okay. Like Anthony right. Adventure, your host. Uh, yes, your host. But subscribe to Chase if you haven't already. Probably already did. Uh, I just say but, shoots, yeah. though. <laughs> shoots, okay. What does that mean? Just buy? Yeah, shoots is like a. It's kind of like a buy. It's kind of like a okay. Like if you say Chase, let's go get some drinks. I, I could be like shoots, oh, okay, shoots. You know, or like shoots. But it's got also it. like all right, shoots, Anthony. See you later. Like sh- yeah, okay, got it. Um. Yeah, got it. So <laughs> you, you, yeah, you spell it though. You have to spell it S H O O T Z. Usually, I mean, I mean, you could do S, but I mean, it's it's mostly a Z. Got it. And okay. you want to know another hidden trick? Sure. Why we're, not? All familiar, we're all familiar. It's, this is a, a cheat code. We're all familiar with the Shaka, right? We all know what that is. Yeah. But locos do not Shaka like this. If you know, you. Oh, I'll, I'll show you after. It's, you got to keep it loose. You see the difference there? Oh. So these, these three fingers here, you know, don't want to get too... <laughs> Uh, yeah but right. so you don't want to you don't want to this also kind of hurts my wrist here if i squeeze too hard i don't know why oh but yeah. you don't want to shock it like this you want to, it's the looser the better you can even like this is pretty that's that's kind of cutting it close but can i go yeah, past that's kind of cutting it close. <laughs> it's like, it's, it's like, the you, thumb you know, and the pinky like, have to be above the three fingers can't go i think right yeah, 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 okay. they're, they're not like saluting anything <laughs> Well, but it's a loose shaka. You got, and then yeah. you say shoots, just like that. Got it, got it. So loose shaka. Okay. So with that said, thank you guys. Loose shaka. Yeah, loose shakas. No tight shakas. Sorry. <laughs> shoots. Shoots, guys. <laughs> take, take care, everybody. Bye, See you, man. Everyone. <laughs>